up, y'all? Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm Kelsey Boyer, your name is... Soda. I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Maple syrup. Bella. I would never have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Guys, let's do it. I'm ready to go live whenever you are. We're live. We're live. Guys, thank you for coming back for our very first episode. That's right. This is Wrestling on the Rocks, where every show is our first show. We can't figure this out. I might pledge my oath to you that we will never figure it out. <laughs> Guys, I am at Ref Marsh. I appreciate you coming through, grabbing a stool, and then pouring a drink to yell about wrestling, and to chase down the flavor of Wednesday Night Wrestling. If any, there was a night that needed a pickleback. It's last night. I am at Ref Marsh. We got WOTR, the show producer over there, and today is back for the first time of the year, Miss Amanda Jane. Say, hey, what's up? I can't hear you. Did you not unmute her? Amanda, are you muted? Oh, I'm muted. Uh oh. Hi. <laughs> Happy New Year. Don't worry about it. It's the first show. In my drink, I, in my non-sponsored Sonic, I think I put too much, uh, too much rum in here. So sorry. I was just happy it wasn't me, producer lady. <laughs> I was shocked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Party bell. <laughs> Don't worry. It's only the first episode. It's not even that big yeah, of a deal. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Amanda, tell tell people hi. Introduce yourself. I did. Hi. Uh, Ms. Amanda Jane at Twitter and Instagram, if you guys didn't know. Totally happy to be here with you guys. It's a new year. A lot of new wrestling. New year, same guests. That's what yeah. we do here. <laughs> uh, Amanda, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have any news written down. I, I didn't find a whole Ooh. lot except for the one thing that you wanted to bring up, so I don't want to steal your thunder yeah. there. Uh, yeah, I well, see. was there any birthdays that we missed? I don't know. I thought someone had a birthday. Yeah, I definitely forgot. I know someone did. I know Chrissy on Twitter. She sent me a Bailey sweater, so shout out to Chrissy. She's dope, but that's it. I can't remember the other ones. Uh, we yeah. did my brother already. So let's, let's shoot it over to you. And here's Amanda with the news. So um, I know a lot of you right now, it's kind of breaking, kind of not breaking, but... Um, Breaking, not breaking. Officially, uh, New Japan has taken Jay White off of their website. So where he's going might be WWE because he did repost something with uh, Finn's picture. So Yeah, Finn posted something and he retweeted it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that's a red herring? Do you think that's part of the work? Or do you think... uh, I don't know. I don't think he'd really fit in with what AEW has right now. And Impact, he wouldn't go to Impact. And I know he would not go back to ROH. So it, ha- it kind of has to be WWE. Why do you think, well, I mean, I guess maybe it's just speculation. Um, mm-hmm. Do you do you know why he wouldn't? I thought he was friends with the guys in All Elite. I, you- I just don't think, I mean, like right now when you look at their programming, I mean, they brought a lot of pretty big names but you got to ask yourself what are they doing with them so i don't think that that he would add anything to the programming i agree with that i actually feel that right now i think that what aew really needs to do is try to not be bringing in everyone they can i feel like their roster is so stacked with talent right now and they are so young they don't have the benefit of longevity because something that wwe and nxt have is that longevity to where if someone comes in, we're already in the middle of a whole bunch of other stories and you start going, Oh, and now this person's involved here and you can kind of like see it, but it feels like everybody's kind of starting to stop and go when it comes to AEW. Like I, I think that they should just focus on getting the next couple of years out and only sprinkling in people here and there. But uh, cause I agree, like what, what's Miro doing? He's a main event caliber guy and he's, not even always there. He's cutting weird promos. He's dressed in kind of like a, 
I guess how he wants to dress, like yeah. like in his pajamas half the time. I'm also just not good with fashion, so that's not like a, trying to knock on him. I don't think he looks sloppy or no. anything. It just to me looks similar to what I imagine expensive pajamas look like. Maybe he's just comfortable. I don't know, but I agree. I don't know what um I don't I don't know what Jay White would do on AEW, but get lost in the mix right now. So yeah. I do think it'd be cool to have him in, in NXT, to be honest. He seems like a badass. Yeah, and honestly, like, we don't really know what officially AEW is doing with um, Impact. That's but true. I know we'll talk about that when we uh, talk about Wednesday. That's true. We don't know what's going on over at Impact. Uh, also, isn't Jay White, isn't he the dude who broke JR's ribs? Ooh. I don't know. Wasn't that him? I could have sworn that was him. There was a, a match on like Wrestle Kingdom and JR had recently had like gotten hurt or something and they made of like a huge stink, apparently, oh, according to whatever. I no, I don't think it was. No, who was it? I'll have to look that up, but I don't think it was. Because remember, there was, was like something. this whole like he doesn't bump everyone. Stay away from him. Stay away from the the the, the table. Oh, uh, that's and right. I, and I thought it was Jay White who like just literally like ran and like drop kicked the table and it like just uh, actually broke his ribs and he's all like uh, he was all trying see. to play it up uh you're right it is him yeah see he I might have bad blood in AEW him. yeah well JR might be like fuck that kid <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe well, that's not his choice I mean <laughs> that's true yeah. too yeah I don't know well so good I luck do to think Jay it's White. interesting. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, good luck to Jay White. We'll see where he pops up, and and I'm interested. I'm looking out for him. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Since we're already in it, Amanda, what's in your glass? Well, obviously, since I was on mute, I have our non-sponsored Sonic uh, slushy cherry with a uh, kind of a lot of rum in it because I was on. I forgot I was on mute, and I also have a can of Coke. Very good. Very good, very good. I mm -hmm. am having coffee, and right now I'm about to make that coffee a proper coffee. Woohoo! Number 12. Because, um, I don't know, I had kind of a long day today. I mean, it wasn't longer than the hours, because that's just not how it actually works. You know, you. It just feels like a long day. It just felt long. That's what watching Dynamite was yesterday. <laughs> Dynamite felt long. You're like, long. when they talk about when people are like, oh, do you think Dynamite should add a third hour? I'm like, they haven't? Yeah, I know. Are you serious? I'm old. How much am I watching? Like, yeah. For what? <laughs> yeah, for what? Do I get, um, we, we get another weird promo with Jericho? Man. Yeah. No. Was, at least he wasn't on commentary. Thank He's God. got a real thing about he doesn't like silence in such a weird way. Really? That when he's on commentary, yeah. Like, listen, I mean, you can't not, but like, check out an episode with him on commentary and notice how he's filling every gap of air. He just can't stand there to be silence. Um, I think even notably the tribute episode was, was tough at parts where you're, there's emotional things happening and he's screaming yeah yelling in your ear and not rambling. saying stuff and rambling and rambling and you're like it's it's fine dude just it's fine to be silent for a minute and let us sit in this um but that was to me where it really started to stand out where i was like fuck jericho stop just for a minute let me process this but, but would you rather but, hear jericho screaming or excalibur do his stuff that you just like hate his over explaining of whatever yeah, so Excalibur can be incredibly patronizing, but I also think that I don't. I think he's allowing room to breathe. Everyone was being silent, but Jericho, or everyone was making their moments. So I do think that the cadence of Excalibur is not bad. I don't think that. I don't think his voice is like grating or anything. I don't think he sounds too excited or too stoic. I think he's actually pretty good about about that stuff. It's his tone that he takes with me he he's got like you did you see the talking smack the other day where kayla was telling paul Heyman, she's like we're not doing this paul we're not doing this today and he goes and he just goes kayla let me give you some free counsel and he goes take that tone out your mouth <laughs> so fucking funny 
That's how I feel Excalibur. I'm like, Excalibur, take that tone. <laughs> Got a little bit in the chat, and then we'll get into AEW, I suppose. Guys, thank you for coming through. Kiro is back. Friend of the show, friend of Brock, Brock Lesnar. He says, um, why do you guys never talk about Impact? Because we talk about what we watch. Who watches Impact? No, there's no. Oh, come on! You guys that, are... That's a very good question. I mean, I, I'll admit I don't even mean it that things. way. I just well, recently I found out it's on YouTube. Oh, it is. I just found out it's on YouTube. Yeah, or oh, is that MLW's that. on YouTube? I'm pretty sure they got thought... Twitch going too. Yeah, but they counter program us. Impact is not at the same time as us. That's. Oh, that's unfortunate. I don't even know what Impact r- runs. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I the thing don't know. Is, is I'm willing to watch Impact matches when I hear about them after the fact, but there's just enough going on over there that I've seen that I didn't feel it, uh, excited about, I guess I'll say, that yeah. I didn't feel like I got it tuned back in. You, you know thought what I mean? it was like the developmental yeah. of developmental? Uh, I don't know if I'd say that, but I didn't, it didn't stand out to me in any big way. Even the big returns that I was expecting to be big, like when Eric Young had his first match back and Heath Slater... Rhino going back. I was like, this is kind of cool. The big, the, the good brothers. But I watched the matches and I was just like, oh, this just feels like watching Impact from before. This doesn't feel like new and fresh or, or even like I, I wanted to give it space while it kind of like became a, a bigger thing. But I don't know. It just, it hasn't grabbed me when I've watched stuff. I like Chris I, Bay. I think yeah. Chris Bay is fantastic, and I think he's got a huge future ahead of him. And that's just it, too, is I think I'm more fans of the talent than I am of the product. Is that weird to say? No. No. That's, I mean, that's an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love a lot of the people on there. Sleeth and Rhino. Er, Sleeth. Heath and Rhino, the Good <laughs> Brothers. I fucking love the Good Brothers. Every time I see them, I smile because I yeah. can't help but think about the moment of my life that was one of those, I can't believe this is how my life is right now. Where I was just drinking whiskeys with the two of them, <laughs> talking wrestling, and I was like, "This is fucking incredible!" New best friends, you know. But you know, it was just one night of drinking. Crows in That's the chat, yeah. telling no, us. No, and I to and watch. honestly, like I saw that now Sue Young because she's one of my favorites. I really love the women's division, but uh, Sue Young yeah. has now another side of Susie. Now there's Susan. And so I have to look at that and catch up with that. So. I did see that. But I was again, there's so much hoping. to watch that. I was hoping like, you could share oh. some light on that, but oh. you're still catching up. Yeah, so you don't know a lot about the new Susan character, the third dimension? No, no. Uh, Leah Moonlight, cheers to her as well, coming through. Oh, evening. I don't know what, yeah, Crow saying code. to watch, uh, watch on Twitch. Uh, you kind of need to watch Impact to understand AEW this week. But the problem is that we already watch, I feel like, quite a bit. And to get everyone on the show to watch is kind of a task. Yeah, there's already a lot. And the thing is, is I shouldn't have to watch your YouTube special, your Twitch third promotion, and your national TV show to get what's happening that's really on the commentators to tell that story oh my god if you haven't been tuning in the commentary does not do a good job of explaining what's happening even enough right if they even said oh my god i can't believe this is happening over on impact if you missed it this and this happened i can't believe what's going on and at the end of it being like oh my god this seems like it's going to trickle back over to impact you know some sort of lame excuse to tell you if you didn't watch it before you're missing out now and you're going to not want to miss next week. I don't feel like they do that. They come in and they just go, oh, here they are. And this is exactly what it looks like. And you go, okay, then here I am. But I don't think that I was lost. I mean, because two weeks ago, the Good Brothers came out. And two weeks, be- a week before that, Kenny had already announced his partnership with the Good Brothers on their Twitter. Like, that's just it, too, is I watch a lot of the Impact's videos on their instagram and they show every clip with kenny and with don Callis, and i've i mean i've known for what two three weeks now that we knew that this coming up pay-per-view was going to have uh omega and the good brothers tag teaming up against the motor city machine guns and um who do they have with them rick rich swan so like i we've known about that for a long time so i don't think that it was all like how could this happen plus 
from the moment Don Callis showed up, before he even got involved in the first match, I'd said even really? on this show, one of our previous episode ones, I said, oh, Don Callis is there. Does that mean we're building towards getting good brothers with the elite finally? <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, the thing was like, that's really playing far out. And I'm like, maybe, maybe not, but it seems like you're putting Don Callis on your TV. There's no way this isn't leading to something. Clearly, we're having a, a mix of impact in AEW. We're going to get to the Bullet Club reuniting in some way, right? That's where we're going. So when they when he showed up, it wasn't all like, what? It was like, oh, cool. They This is what they're building towards. We're doing it. So I don't think that I... And I also, it's not that I... I didn't... We didn't even got to that part, but I didn't even like hate that segment or anything. You know what I mean? I was fine with all that too. So it wasn't like, I don't know, unless there's something else I'm missing from it that, that you think I'm missing. Yeah. But I watch what, I, what Impact puts on their Instagram. And if there's something on there that teases a match well enough, I'll go back and watch that match. Yeah. But. But isn't that like, like watching like YouTube wrestling though? Mm -hmm. And watching uh, Dark? Yeah. Exactly. And that's just it too. And Justin says it here in the chat. He goes, so many people always said WWE has so much content and AEW uh, is right in the same category, wanting you to watch so many different things to understand what's happening on Dynamite. But I think that's the big difference between AEW having the different content and WWE having the content that they have. WWE has it all in one spot. You watch three hours of Raw every week and you know exactly what's happening on Raw. If you don't follow their Twitter, if you don't follow their Instagram, if you don't look at their YouTube... You're not confused by what's happening. You don't have to go somewhere else. You don't have to watch the whole show, but it's in the show. It's in it. And same with SmackDown. They have little stuff. They have documentaries and stuff on their, their network and stuff. They, they do have things that highlight what's going on. Some of the documentaries like Chronicle, I really like. They'll help build into a match, get you excited for one. But you don't need it to know what's happening. Where with AEW, it feels like they've got their two hours on national TV. And they're all like, yeah, but everything's happening on dark being the elite or impact. And you're like, well, I don't literally want to go to three other sources to find it. So I don't know. I just think that commentary could, could make me want to watch it more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, just going through the chat, Amanda, let's get into it and cheers to Justin for coming through. Thank you, Justin. We appreciate you. And cheers to Kuro, man. I appreciate you bringing, bringing the heat. We're going to, like, piss him off, though. He's going to leave. Is that, is that... Kuro's going to sit there and go, oh, yeah, Impact is on at the same time. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about Impact. I can only, I think, obviously, we know who the tag titles are on. I know who the women's champion is and the men's. And I can't remember whoever the ex, well, I think it's Chris I mean, Bay. Isn't, it, isn't Chris Bay the other division champ? The X division? Yeah. Or whatever they call it? I don't know. My, yeah. yeah. Not my bag. But again, I, I do want to reiterate, I'm, we're huge fans of almost everyone on that roster. It's just for whatever yeah. reason, the collective showing on the show has not grabbed me. But I'm like, I want almost everyone on there to succeed. There's Like a, the storytelling and all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not invested in it. And when I try to watch it, I go, oh. But I like the I like the people involved. I you know. That's how I feel about NWA. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I'll drink to that one. Yeah. <laughs> what could have been NWA? What could have been? Yeah. We do the fire. 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 It's such promise. I know. I know. I know. And Marshare went to the live tapings too. That's how you. we met. That's how I met. Yeah. Amanda. That's how I'm met. telling our viewers. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I got in how trouble. Me and Amanda went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I'll talk to you offline about that. Yeah, that we'll talk about that. One. <laughs> that came up in conversation recently. Oh. So. <laughs> uh -oh. It went well. Everything is fine now. But that definitely got brought up in conversation to me. So it was really funny. You guys <laughs> yeah i know i was waiting like a snake in the grass like a shot in the glass like a shark in my pants guys <laughs> let's talk aew dynamite <laughs> into the fire oh 
Now it's going to be stuck in my head. Damn it. Damn them for using Dokken like that. Damn them. I know. (laughs) Okay, so this was supposed to be the second night of their special, the New Year's Smash. Did you feel like by the end of it, this was a special episode of Dynamite? Or did you feel like this was another Dynamite? This was another Dynamite. And I, I don't, you know, honestly, it was a special honestly, episode. The first episode didn't feel like it was anything special either. It really didn't. These past two ones yeah. really felt like you renamed your first two episodes of Dynamite. And I wouldn't say that's true of all their special episodes. Winter is Coming yeah. felt like a special episode. Felt like Winter is Coming did come, and that was great. That's and true. I bet you next week, because it's uh, Negative One's birthday, that might be probably more special than the two new year's ones were that's possible Uh, just because i'd like them to do something nice for him i don't know if we need to focus an entire episode on him again but i also don't think it would bother me i I think it's cool yeah um i know that uh um they've shown a lot more stuff backstage and i've seen a lot more stuff than i was originally out there so i feel a lot better about all the things they're doing with with the young boy because uh just because of personal uh instances of similar tragedies i um was a little uncomfortable with the usage of 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 the kid at that time of of how soon everything was so um that's not to take away any of the stuff but i will say that i've seen a lot more i've heard more people talk about the goings on backstage in that regard and i feel a lot better about pretty much all of my reservations there. So I do think it's really cool that he's around those people and experiencing the things he's able to experience. And I I think it's actually really cool. So I'm glad that that stuff kind of trickles out after a while, you know, so we'll see what they do for, for negative one. Yeah. You think his dad gave him the nickname negative one or do you think it was a joke by somebody else? You know, I was wondering that. Yeah. And I think maybe someone else came up with that. But then again, I don't know. Or maybe it's just something private that they won't disclose. So true. I wouldn't be surprised because yeah. I think the numbers thing was a joke amongst the, the team because uh, Anna Jay got 99 for some reason. Yeah. And obviously they skipped numbers. So I feel like all the numbers were jokes for specific reasons, just little little tags on stuff. And... Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, then they made the comment to Dustin that he could come in and join and be seven, which was obviously a joke and callback to his WCW days, mm-hmm. the one time he showed up as seven. But it just makes me wonder, who's the who's the ones making the jokes if it's all of them? I just get curious. I wonder if it's even in being the elite. They might even explain it. No, I don't think it is. But you I know? do, yeah, but I do think, obviously, because when um, the original two members of the Dark Order, you know, Evil Uno and Stu mm-hmm. Grayson... Mm-hmm. When they were Super Smash Brothers, it was player one and player two. So that's probably where they got that from. Got the one and two. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm into it. I liked it as the cult thing, you know, giving them numbers. It it didn't make yeah. anyone feel special, but it did make the, the overall cult like gimmick make sense. So I just wonder. I, was, I just wonder, cult? especially if it comes from a joke. I just get curious who's making the jokes back there. Like it yeah. could be silver. Who knows? And they have a cult a C O L T too. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. In the cult. Cult, cult. Cool. So, son of a bitch. It's all good. It's just the first episode. It's not a big deal. So the show opened up with Pac versus Eddie Kingston to kick off Dynamite. What would you think of about this? We haven't seen Pac in a match in a little bit. I mean, I think it had a pretty solid build when you think about it. I don't know why, but all their matches always seem like a surprise to me. But when you think about it, you're like, well, I guess it has been sort of building. Um, yeah. there's been tensions there. It's been weirdness there. And I, I thought it was a bit of a surprise. You put them together so quick and it was, a, yeah. but it was a really good match. Yeah. And I just don't like how now that Eddie lost to Mox, it just seems like everyone's going to come in and just beat the hell out of him and, and whatnot. And just kind of, you know, it puts Eddie in a place, but yeah. I don't know if it helps him or, if it hinders him, anything that helps him when he's on the mic, total positive. When he's not, it's like, well, what are you, what are you trying to accomplish? How many years do you think he's got left in him? Oh, God, couple, maybe 
two, three. Right. At the like, most. I just don't feel like he's got a lot of years left. And yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. I want him to do this as long as he wants to, because I'll never stop watching him. And much like yeah. The Undertaker, we probably could have said 20 years ago, he's probably got one or two years left in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you just never know. He could go forever. So this isn't by any means trying to say, you wrap it up, dude, hang him up. I'm not saying that at all. You do you. You live your life. I don't think he's ever done anything else but live it the way he wants to. Oh, but yeah. keep doing that. We're going to be here for you. But it does make me wonder. I also wonder if if he cares that he's losing or that he comes off a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, does he? The, yeah. Are we actually going to get to a place where AEW puts in a significant title on him? I don't know. He'll always be believable because of the way he talks. And that's something mm-hmm. that not everyone there has. So if you can make a credible opponent like a Kingston in every fight, but Kingston keeps losing, but you keep believing he's going to stab you. It might work for him and it might make him enough money where he can pay off his fucking house and just be happy. And whenever he's done in ring, hopefully it sets him up in a spot where he can work in some level with the business and teach people what he knows. Cause he seems like a lot of wisdom. Oh yeah. So I don't know. But yeah, I wonder that but too. Thought, he keeps losing and I keep going like, oh, am, am I not meant to be invested in him? Because it's hard not to be. But also, yeah. am I am I not expecting him to win anymore? But he did a couple of years ago, like three years ago in the indies. Um, I honestly thought he was going to be hanging it up because, I mean, he was having problems with his knees and his back. And I mean, it was just so believable. Some of the stuff he did it, um, a, is, it was AAW in Chicago, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. But yeah. Um, I, I think that with Eddie, it's really hard. He's hard to read on that one. So, yeah. but when you look at it, maybe a couple of years. I mean, if you, you know, but I, I don't think anything beyond that. Not without some sort of time off with some surgeries, which he probably couldn't have afforded before, but maybe he's going to get to exactly. a place where he could. Because that'd be nice. I'd like to see him get the get the surgeries he may need to extend his career another five or six and live comfortably you know what i mean like that'd be dope. absolutely that'd be dope i don't know i agree though seeing eddie kingston lose is always a bummer but Pac is real fucking good it is really Pac hard is to... really good <laughs> yeah he's good at winning matches he's smooth in the ring he's also mm-hmm. physically smooth like a dolphin that's a good analogy <laughs> I don't know why I'm tickled by that. <laughs> he comes out and I go, that dude's got no water resistance. <laughs> There's just no way. Yeah, but it was good. It was a good match. It was a good fight. I liked it. He's one where I don't cringe if he's getting on the ropes. Yes. I never, I, I never have that hesitation. I mean, there's a couple, there've been a couple of times now, even with Seidel. I mean, I know that's your thing, dude, yes. but I've gotten kind of scared, but Pac doesn't do that for me i don't know why yeah there's a few people who they just go up there so naturally they they're so sure-footed they're not wiggling they're just perfectly balanced the whole time that you just don't get nervous I would, i'd say Pac, and probably the other one comes to mind immediately is snoop dog yeah you know just totally a natural agile. on the top rope. Agile. <laughs> totally agile yeah I don't it's think basically I do cirque it. du soleil Mm-hmm. From the hood. Adi, adi, adi. It's a motherfucking deal. Double G. They probably had it in Inglewood in the parking lot there. The <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. Maybe. Be shocked. Maybe. But, Maybe. okay, so the match was good. After that, Lance Archer comes out, and he's trying to attack Eddie Kingston. He comes out, and he posted a whole thing on the, the, the old – Social media where he clipped off his big long braids. And he's like, I did a thing or whatever. But then he came out and he had him back. And I was like, did you just switch out your extensions and make a picture of it? Like, I think that's what he did. <laughs> Changing out my extensions for new ones. I was bummed about that. I'm like, I was expecting something new. Right? And I'm like, those are the same, like, style braids. What? Yes. <sighs> whatever. You're a loser <laughs> no give the people what they so, want if you're gonna build it up on social media like that come on there's no payoff something. yeah it was yeah the there's same. no payoff it was the same but um i don't know i guess there was a bunch of people going around 
I'm slipping through the Chuck Taylor thing. So they made a whole deal of this a couple weeks ago or last week where Chuck Taylor Miro says, you're going to be my young boy. By the end of this match, by the beginning of the match, they were saying they weren't using the term young boy anymore. After Jericho had actually done a good thing and explained clearly what a young boy is in Japan. Mm-hmm. Excalibur is all like, oh, if Chuck loses this one, he's going to be Miro's butler. Well, mm-hmm. now they're calling him his butler. They even made a graphic already of Chuck Taylor in a suit. So they already did the photo shoot. I wish they hadn't aired that immediately. But they're like, oh, see what happens next with Miro and his new young butler. And you're like, dude. I think so, Chuck Taylor might be older than Miro. Yeah, maybe. That's possible. But I mean, so now Chuck they- Taylor is Miro's pool boy butler. I don't know, man. But, Mike, but they can't say, well, I'm surprised they don't say that Chuck Taylor is his bitch because they love the word bitch. That's a good point. Yeah, that's where I'm shocked by. So Maybe by the end of it, because they said it's going to be for a whole month because we're children here and we, we make bets like that. If you do this, then you got to be my slave for a month and do all my chores. That's what it feels like. But so he's going to be the butler for a month. It makes me wonder if by next week they're making fun of him and they're like, you're not even like a young boy. You're more like my bitch boy. And then they just start going with bitch boy because they do love the term bitch. You're right. I mean, it's a good word. First off. Yeah, it is. It's solid. I used to say it so much when I wasn't allowed to say curse words. I would go to Kevlar's house and I would just say bitch as many times as I could in a weekend. (sighs) It was some, it's like sometimes, like when I think back on it, I go, God, what a little shit I was. I said bitch so much for no reason. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm happy with that. But Let's the see. match, I, I'm, you know, Miro, I want to comment on Miro though. Go ahead. Um, it just, I, I don't know with Miro. I don't know how AEW sees him. But he's got that weird Donkey Kong. I I think he looks like Donkey Kong in the beginning of Donkey Kong when he does that stomp thing, and I'm like, yeah. oh god, like what? <laughs> what Donkey is Kong was this? a badass. I know, but Miro's not a badass in his you know his pajamas. There's nothing badass about that. But <laughs> I know, but I think that it's I don't know what they're doing with him. Like, is is that going to be his thing? Just to yeah. kind of be with Kip and that. Once I get what married, if... you know, what, what's there to do? Yeah. So I wonder if they'll just go around and have him make everyone his butler for a month at a time. Oh, just God. Just go through no. the whole roster. I don't see where this road leads to championship. I will be honest. I agree with that. Yeah. But I blinked for a second. And it might have been more than a second because the match was what it was. And I like Miro looking strong, so I didn't mind any of that stuff. Yeah. I don't know where the story goes that makes me any in, any interested in it at all. That still wasn't. I, I tried to redo that sentence. It wasn't a sentence. Yeah. I don't know where it goes that I care about. But I blink. I look back. There's Orange Cassidy hunched down in the corner. I thought he was, like, wiping his butt on the ground like a like a dog scratching his butt. But he wasn't. <laughs> He was just crouched down over there. And I was like, oh, shit, Orange Cassidy is about to get involved. And then he didn't do anything or, at all. And I was like, oh, wait, Orange Cassidy already got involved and I missed it. Miro must mm-hmm. have kicked the shit out of Orange Cassidy and threw him out. That's had to be what happened. I don't kept- find evidence that that's what happened. Um, Justin says Orange Cassidy is about to get more shine for defending his friends. Did he or did he not actually do anything? He tried. Did he try? What do you do? I think so. Did I blink I'm- too and I missed that? Oh, so I, mean, I, I don't. And then when I look at this little review thing I have written up here, it says, because uh, this was written by somebody else, it says, Miro locked eyes with Orange Cassidy, who was at ringside after the match was over. Yeah, they did. That I saw. Yeah. But I don't see anything above that where it says Orange Cassidy attempted to do a thing and defend his friend. It didn't. Well, he tried like to go him. after Chuck oh, no, when they were dragging him away. I thought he did. He didn't even stand up. The dude was crouched down the whole time like he didn't want to be seen. Uh, oh, okay. That's mm-hmm. hardly defending your friends. Yeah, I don't know. He might be. Um, I don't know what we're doing with Orange Cassidy. I think on commentary, they made a comment about, oh, yeah, you know, there's nothing that Orange Cassidy can do for his friend. I think Excalibur had said that. He can't help his friend. Yes. But he also didn't try to. 
he was present after the fact. And then it was like, yeah. but he can't do anything. But he only can't do anything because he didn't try to do anything. But that's Orange Cassidy. Exactly. So yeah. how is Orange Cassidy defending his friends if he's just being Orange Cassidy and not doing anything? Yeah. I'm just saying I don't follow a little bit. I get that. I could see where they build towards Miro versus Orange Cassidy. So um, Cassidy could free his friend from butler hooddom. They're not going to do that. So no, I don't know what the real that. word is. If they Young do that, though, to... yeah. But then you got to have Orange Cassidy beat Miro, and <clears throat> I don't. Well, I mean, they'd have to do a weird, dumb match, like a pool boy match, where they put pools next to the ringside, and you have to splash somebody. Didn't they do like... that already? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> DW takes coming through Bishop. Thank you for coming through the chat. Cheers, my friend, friend of the show. Anybody who's interested for Royal Rumble, me and Kev are going to be doing a watch along with him on his channel. So open up a second tab, go follow TW takes podcast and join us for the rumble. Um, so yeah, so I can see that maybe, maybe they're going to do orange Cassidy versus Miro, but I don't know. Um, that does bring us over to the inner circle. I wasn't going to go segment by segment, but these are all things where I was kind of like, what is happening? Um, yeah. The inner circle announced their new year's resolutions. This is also happening like two weeks into the new year. I feel no. like the resolution thing should have been done last week. If you were going to do it, this feels like you're really milking new years for weeks, that, that's which is why. weird. Mm-hmm. That's why. You... It, uh... Go ahead. Did we need a place for it? No, but I think that was the only thing that could tie it into New Year's. And also because Jericho was not doing commentary this week. Yeah. You could see his face. That's true. I guess without this, the whole show is definitely not New Year's smash. Exactly. I, I, I I didn't really care for this segment. I don't remember liking a second of it. Well... Only because, you know, like Mac, MJF, his character, you know, obviously, I didn't like the fat shaming because Sammy shouldn't have said anything, especially because it's like, oh, you had some sensitivity training. What the hell? And I'm only saying this because I've been a victim of his fat shaming. But yes. So I thought that was yeah, a little, yeah. I was a little miffed about that. Um, really but one cool too. thing. If yeah. you went through sensitivity training, I'll throw it right back. But if you went through that because of the whole thing and was had his paid vacation to do so, this whole segment was him talking about calling Jericho a tag team slut, saying that they were mm-hmm. supposed to be the sex gods, calling one of the guys fat, like, or, or yeah, and then... Get rid of fat people. Get rid of fat people. You're right. It was a little bit like, that's a weird slew of things to say after you came back because you're you're more sensitive now. And I get it, you're a heel too, but those are also all cheap shots that yeah. a good heel doesn't need to take. Although Randy Orton did say Triple H's balls were in his wife's purse. That's a running gag. That's but different. it's a running gag. It is a running gag. <laughs> yeah, but that's different. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally different. But I will say one good thing was funny out right. of that whole segment. The Sammy and um, Hager yeah. team. I think that's hilarious. And literally sammy had no clue what chris was joking about i don't think he still does to this moment but i thought it was yeah funny. i wouldn't be surprised if he didn't i also wouldn't i mean i do feel like there was a moment there where jericho completely dropped character and was just kind of laughing about stuff because i like that and you're just kind of yeah. like what <laughs> and I, but i liked jericho dropping character more so than him being in character i think his character is such a fucking cartoon of himself yeah. That it's really off-putting and not even boo-worthy. But then when he drops it and just talks like a human for a second, you go, oh, yeah, you are a charismatic guy. I remember liking you. Um, Bishop in the chat says he's got Elijah Craig small batch in his glass. Ooh, sounds really good. I like small batches. Batches ain't shit. As Ben Folds always said. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I guess I mean I guess that's true. I didn't like this, and I don't like the idea of them trying to figure out which tag team should be what tag team. I think that actually Santana and Ortiz had a great point that they were meant to be the tag team in the in the the group, and they've done jack shit with it. Like I think what this 
this little segment did is highlight how they don't poorly do jack booked. Shit. Yeah, how poorly booked the inner circle's been from the beginning. This really highlighted how much all of them are nobody right now. Because I have a question I for you. Well, I, I have one too. For okay, you. you go first. All right. Do you remember the last time that Santana and Ortiz tagged together? No. I can't I can't remember. The only thing I could think of was was it that brawl with the best friends in the you know the parking lot? Was that the last time? I know. They were they were in the match as a team in that one? I thought, yeah. Then I'll say that's the last time I remember. I know that there was a couple matches. Yes, because doing- the one got injured yeah. in it and the other one was tagging without him. Mm-hmm. Remember? But yeah. I don't think that they've been they've tagged together since then. I don't know how serious yeah. that injury was. Maybe it was significant. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. Uh Justin says kind of hard to see any other pairings in the inner circle going for the tag titles except for the actual team in Santana Ortiz. I agree with that. However, I think that the way that these shows are thrown together, the way that it feels, I absolutely think there's every reason to believe that Jericho and MJF become tag champions before Ortiz and Santana, and I think it's a shame because I think that's exactly where they're going with it. Amanda, yes. I have a question for you that I positioned to the people last week, and I think you were in the chat, so you chimed in a little bit, but mm-hmm. I want to give you the opportunity to say it to my face. Okay. Um, I think in a good way, I think in a positive way, as much as this is going to sound like a not positive thing to say, I think the company has outgrown Jericho's value. Mm-hmm. I don't think... Jericho brings anything to anybody he's on screen with anymore. He doesn't make commentary more exciting. He doesn't, he said the young boys thing, which they immediately got rid of anyway. So it turns out it was irrelevant knowledge. Um, Losing to Jericho doesn't make anyone in a better position. Beating Jericho doesn't put you in a better position. I mean, Orange Cassidy beat Jericho like what, twice? And where's he? He's cowering in the corner of a mid-card thing about a fucking pool boy, about a butler. This didn't catapult Orange Cassidy into the TNT title picture. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. winning to, against Jericho, losing against Jericho is not a rub, and it's not helping. And they opened the show with him that night they followed NBA, and they got fucking ripped to shreds by the people who tuned in and said, oh, look at Jericho on this bootleg WWE. And I was like, that's probably not the tweet you want out there right now. Yeah. You're probably hoping to have like, oh my God, how have I been mm-hmm. missing this? So I don't know. Do you think, and I'll tell you what Justin in the chat says, it does feel like AEW is past the needing Jericho to enhance the show phase. Jer- mm-hmm. So Justin agrees with me. I think if Jericho has a value to them, it is no longer on screen. It would be behind the scenes, which I think is possible. Amanda, go ahead. What do you think? You know, I, I totally agree. I mean, he's, it's like, what is he good for now? Because I think they've established so many people that weren't stars. And then some of the people that they bring in to the fold, even though sometimes they don't know what to do with them necessarily. I think that Jericho, it's like, well, what do you do? You have this faction of, I don't even know what the, I'd say idiots, to lack of a better term, you know, and it's like, well, what do you do? I mean, I don't, all it does for him is sell, you know, rooms on his cruise and they'll use the AEW talent on his cruise. But I mean, what's there to do? I mean, I don't want another, you know, musical number with him and MJF or God forbid him and like Wardlow or something, you know, and I don't think that anybody who you know like anybody right now there's nothing nobody's really interacting with that inner circle that's all themselves so i mean that's fine for what it is but honestly there's no there's no real place for it so i think they're just using him to use him but he should i think he should be backstage and i think it's also a good point no one's interacting with the inner circle not only are they not a scary faction they're a nobody gives a shit what you're doing faction Your fights are with each other. Mm -hmm. No one's trying to take down the nation of domination here. No one's trying to be the next group that takes out the generation X. This is literally a faction of people honestly fighting with each other. They're about to have another, what is this? A a, a three-way tag title match against each other. Yeah. What a fucking weird incestuous little program you guys have running. 
We'll just do a program yeah. with ourselves. Okay. And literally everyone else in the company is all like, yeah, we don't give a shit. We're not trying to interact with you. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I said it in a mean way. I'll give you that. No, but, but no, I agree. And you I know what? I haven't even thought about that. They're not even interacting. Go ahead. But also, too, I think the one match that everybody wants, and they kind of were leaning toward it but didn't, is Sammy and MJF. Yeah. The two snotty, like, think they're all that guys. That's probably the only thing I think an inner circle that we really need because we already got Wardlow and and Hager out of the way. So this is the last <laughs> the last stand, to, you know, to do is those two. Yeah. What else do we need to give you guys to shut you up? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's hit the chat real quick. We got a, we got a chatty group tonight and I love it. Let's see. Yay. <laughs> Bishop says Jericho doesn't move the needle if uh, it's AEW being different that moves the needle. And I agree with that. When people are watching and talking about AEW, it's not like, hey, did you see what Jericho did? I really don't feel like that's the case at all. Uh, Except for the people who just say everything he does is perfect every time. I really enjoy giggling at the apologists for Jericho where they're all like, yeah, but... He's like 50, so like when you think about like how old he is and what he's done, like I mean, it's pretty good we're even getting this level out of him. And you're like, dude, dude, no one says that shit about like a no one's yeah but about AJ Styles or Brock Lesnar or Triple H. Mizor- no one's being Minora like yeah Suzuki. but yeah. So murder grandpa, he's like 52 grandpa? years old. Yeah, Mizor- Minoru yeah. Suzuki. Yeah, 52 years old. And that man scares the living shit out of me. Isn't Jericho, Batista no. like a year different than Jericho? I think so. That dude is a goddamn Marvel superstar because he looks like a comic book still. I'm not saying mm-hmm. it's about looks, but I'm saying his WrestleMania match was fucking sick, dude. Um, let's see. Oh, whoops. Um, Feptina says not at all. She, she said, I don't even think Sting moves the needle anymore. Bishop said, had Sting done anything, he would have. In the YouTube era, things have hit now... Things have to hit now and different all the time. So, yeah, Sting comes in. He stares at people. He winks at people. Oh, yes, snow no. comes. Dude, the snow hit late this week. I loved it. I um, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit that in just a second. Uh, but, yeah, things are hitting in a different way where it's all like when people say it's going to be Sting, it's going to be Sting, and they tune in, and they go, that's it? The next week when you go, Sting's coming back next week, they go, yeah, but he didn't do shit this week. And then they go, what do you do? what do you do the week I missed? He winked at the guys. What? He winked at the guys and left. It was about 30 seconds. Okay, well, fuck. He's got to do something. He needs to do something. This week he did, but was it enough? Justin said, every time he's on TV in a wrestling capacity, it's so predictable Jericho's going to win. It does nothing for anyone. Well, that's true, too. And you can tell when he's going to lose. Like, I knew he was going to lose that Mimosa match because of how stupid the match was. And he just yeah. gets off on weird shit like that. I don't know. I'm not here to shit on Jericho, but I'm not going to not. But <laughs> he has done a lot. He has had a long career, but I'm well past the time frame of giving a shit what he's doing on TV. I think I don't think that he's helping the company at this point from a from a an on screen presence. Standpoint. They needed him year one. Now we're in year two, and they don't need him. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think they needed him during any of that time. I think that the other people were on there were doing more, but I do think the first couple months he provided something to them. Yeah. But I think that at this point, he was just completely outworn the welcome. Like, he did have year one grace. There was a, hey, it's your first year. You've got Jericho. This will be cool. I do also think they wasted year one with him because they made the announcement in that January. He wasn't on TV with them until that fucking October. And I was all like, oh, that's a long time to sign a person and not use them. And I think that that was always a time that could have been good time with Jericho. But who knows? Who knows? I'm just ready to turn the channel on Jericho. Let's see. The next thing was also pretty predictable, but fun. Kenny Omega was going to come out with Young Bucks, and they're all like, oh, no, 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 we're going to come out different. We're going to come out different. Oh, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, are the Good Brothers coming out instead? And then they come out, and he's all like, oh, you guys know them. They're the champs. I was like, it sounds like they're talking about the Good Brothers, right? And then the Good Brothers came out, and the internet goes, oh, my God, I can't believe it's them. And I was like, what? You guys not watch wrestling? Do you just not watch it? Like... <laughs> But it was Kenny Omega, the Good Brothers, against the Varsity Blondes and Danny Limelight. And seeing as how I had very little clue much about those guys other than their names, 
I had a feeling how this was going to end, and it did. But I really like seeing the Good Brothers out here. I like seeing them with Kenny Omega. It leads me to believe that we're going to get a three-on-three match with other elite in my mind. I think so, too. Who do you think? In my mind, the way the Young Bucks were like... Fuck this guy. <laughs> I. Oh, that's such a Nick Jackson thing. Yeah. And I feel like the. the yeah. Fuck I feel guy. like. <laughs> with Hangman Page being all wrapped up with the Dark Order and a whole other thing that I'm not thrilled with. Don't tell me if, Cody. I feel like it can't be Cody because Cody's wrapped up in Shaquille O'Neal for some reason oh, and Snoop Dogg. What? What is happening over there? In my mind, my gut tells me, and you heard it here first. I am no insider, but I'll take full credit when this happens as an actual journalist. I don't know. I just feel like Scroll's going to show up over there. He's been teasing a lot on his Instagram. He's been Mm -hmm. showing a bunch of pictures. They clearly Mm -hmm. parted away with ROH. Oh, yeah. Who's he going to work with but his fucking best friends? I feel like you're going to have Omega and the Good Brothers poke and prod and be little dicks and in like a week or two you're gonna have the fucking villain show up with the young bucks and say no we'll we don't care that you're bigger than all of us i'll fucking break every one of your fingers yeah i that's oh i really want that in a perfect world i really really want that i'm hoping i mean everything is crossed i mean i am like the biggest like marty squirrel nut that I probably know, but uh, no, actually, no, I know some other ones too, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty out there, but I'd love to see that. Um, Didn't have the best like feedback I saw with ROH saying that, you know, they parted ways, but at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? It's not my decision. It's not your decision. It's whoever's decision. And to be, to be completely honest, um, there are worse people out there. So yeah. that's all I'm going to say about that. But I have a feeling that I don't know why, but they're just going to screw it up and do mocks and the young bucks. And that uh, I don't care for because right. I wouldn't care about that at all. I wouldn't yeah. Care. You have to do something that's okay. We were promised the elite. We didn't get the elite. Right. So the Yeah. We got and the it's club. not even we the did. OC. It's not even the original or the only no. club that matters. Yeah, it's not. It is the B club. So, yeah. So, you know, you got to give, give me something. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how else you or who else you could do. But the, the elite technically were all five of them. I mean, they had all of them. Cody, Hangman, Marty, you know, the Bucks, Kenny. All of them had those stupid the elite shirts that they sold at Hot Topic. I've got two of them, like right over here. My Marty wins, yeah. <laughs> a special edition and the regular one with the owl. <laughs> so, producer I mean... wants to say. Producer wants to th- throw something out there real quick. You okay. said B club, and for whatever reason, the first thing that popped in my mind was the B team. Mm-hmm. So that's that was yeah, what was going? One hundred percent, what I was going for. Yeah, it's not great. B club, B club, B club. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I am. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be excited about Moxley and Young Bucks because it would feel like one of those like, oh, the friend of my enemies is a friend to me. And yeah. those are just ones I'm not all that into. I, I mean, they're they're usually fine matches, but, you know, strange bedfellows we have again. I'm not super thrilled about without without that. I also think that Moxley is a better solo act than he is when he's paired up with anybody. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see Moxley and... Um hawk to be quite honest that, that would be, be really neat fun. that'd be very neat but i do think that i do him think that we're gonna 2.0. get him and eddie again would be good yeah especially with that'd be great. on the line like that grudge match yeah i do think that we get Ma- uh marty in aew based purely off the fact of like he was part of the plan the whole time but couldn't turn down the opportunity he had in roh which He's no longer the opportunity he has in front of him. Yeah. Do you think, being objective and without any kind of like background knowledge concept, 
do you think that there's a possibility? Because I think he's going to come back to wrestling. I do. And I agree with you that there's worse people out there. And all I'll say about the stuff that came out about him was that it was not similar to any of the other stories we had heard. It was not nearly the predatorial behaviors that we had read before. And at the end of the day, the whole movement of speaking out needs to be based around the concept of redemption and better bettering people. And I mean, he was one of those ones where you go, well, what he did was a technicality with shittiness behind it. It seems like there's room to grow there. You know what I mean? So all I'll say is that if, if growth happened, if, if he's redeemed himself one way or the other, then I don't have any reason to not have him in the wrestling business. Not like some people where you go, you are just a blatant predator who attacked people. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I do feel like his story was different, which I do think lends him to the availability to some of these other companies because of all that though, it has tainted his internet presence for sure. And his reputation, which means that companies need to be a little more sure footed when bringing him in. But it also means that his opportunities have lessened. Do you think there's a possibility he would ever sign with WWE now versus before where clearly creative control was always a major factor do you think he has the position now where if NXT had offered him something, if he would be able to just turn his nose or would he have to at least consider it at this point? You know, I think he would probably have to consider it. But I don't think that that's really the place for him. Just because I think that he is, well, two things. One, that he's going to get buried into the back. Or they just will just ship you off to NXT UK because you know you're a Brit and what whatnot. But I think that he won't have the opportunities that he would have if he were to go elsewhere. Elsewhere meaning AEW. Impact, I don't I, I don't even know what their situation is. So I don't wanna throw that into the into the fire. Um but fire. <laughs> Um, but uh i think that you know i think that he would go because he he doesn't really have choices other than oh let me start my own thing and i doubt he would do that so oh that's true too if he were to start his own company i'll yeah. i'll say this about aew versus nxt in my mind i think in aew it would actually be much easier for him to get lost in the mix what is any of the elite doing right now that feels ultra relevant or ultra important or even super main eventy you know what i mean like you've got kenny omega doing all of his stuff on impact the young bucks were barely even shown on the tv at all and hangman page is a secondary story in a mid-card concept none of the elite are excelling over there they're just not because no, the company's still young and growing but i think if you throw him into an nxt situation i think you immediately get marty and adam cole and kyle o'reilly undisputed era i think if you went to nxt uk the idea of marty and and um Ilya dragunov oh. sounds fucking incredible to me the idea of marty teaming up with pete dunn to take out the undisputed era because i know you guys you know what i mean like yeah those kinds of pairings excite me where when I think of Marty and AEW, I go, I guess he'll pair up with the Young Bucks in some way and have a match with who? Pac? That could be cool. But who else is he going to have a match in there that's going to excite me? Well, I think um, with Marty, it's really not the... Because Marty, in my opinion, he's always been... His bookings are very weird. Like the only times I think he's ever booked really strong have been in New Japan. And obviously, you know, some of his other, you know, independent stuff. But I think that with AEW, the problem is, is that I don't even think they really know what they're, what they want, what they're, what they want, what they're doing. I don't, I don't know. Cause now we're in year two and it just seems like it's such a mishmash of everything. And a lot of things just don't make sense. Like the, you know, inner circle why are we bitching with each other i mean yeah okay you need them to do something but with the bucks i understand that yeah you know was it nick or was it, it was nick who had covid right that it came out that he was out yeah. on the shelf with covid so maybe that's why they're not rest he wasn't wrestling and they haven't been around i don't know mm -hmm. but it's really weird like the one person i think has been a huge miss and he's not even doing he's not even doing dark is joey janela 
and yeah, that's the he one. Was never one of the elite, right? No, no, he was on it once um, when they were filming at PWG, I think. Once? Yeah, Fuck. but he's not doing anything. He's Sunny not. Kiss, yeah, th- those guys aren't doing anything, and so I now, think like, in not in, the, in defense of them necessarily, because I've grown to appreciate Joey Janela on a different level than when I first started seeing him. Yeah. But truly, when you think about who's booking and who's in charge and all the EVPs, you've got people who consider themselves elite wrestlers, self-taught stars, and all this stuff. And Joey Janela's claim to fame was jumping off of a house onto light bulbs and cutting himself so bad he had to go to the hospital. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, his his claim to fame was YouTube cringe videos. So... Mm-hmm. I could completely understand that the company might turn their nose up towards him because we brought you in thinking you were going to get us YouTube hits. You know what I mean? But he's not doing anything for them to garner YouTube hits. Correct. And that's on them. When you're not booking booking someone. Yes. But, you know, even, like, I look back, and when I think about, um, I'm going to go all the way back to All In. And I think about his match with Hangman. And I mean, that was a pairing that I never thought, you know, I would see. It was a very interesting pairing of the two of them. And that's where with Janela, I love is when you see those weird, interesting pairings that he does. And that's where he really kind of survives and really thrives. So... I thought the video packages he was putting together right before we really stopped seeing him, before he paired up with Sunny Kiss, he put together mm-hmm. a couple of video packages that they aired that made me really interested in what he was up to, but then yeah. I didn't move on it. Uh, I'm going to hit the chat real quick. T- uh, Bishop says that he's got a B-team shirt, and because we hate it so bad, and we do, that he's going to wear it during the Rumble show now. Um, nice. My God. Uh, Grim Reaper came through the chat. Cheers to Grim Reaper. Thank you for coming through, buddy. He's a friend of the show, as always, and he says that he agrees there'd be more opportunities in NXT for, for Marty, and I think it's at least from a fan standpoint, of a dream match standpoint, although I do say constantly, and I do completely agree that the term dream match is thrown around like crazy when it's not really a thing. Exciting, excited for matches is not the same as dream match, So, but I'll use it here, because fuck it. I've had a few. Um... But I think that's all I had to say about that, really. They're, the whole uh, segment fell apart into a ton of tag teams. I don't know what we're doing with it, but I'm curious where we go with it just because the Good Brothers are involved now. Mm-hmm. But my heard it here first, and I'm going to take credit for it, is I think Marty shows up in AEW and teams up with the Young Bucks. Agree. Um, if he doesn't, I will buy me a drink. Okay. <laughs> that's a good deal. <laughs> uh, let's but see. I've been I don't... saying it all along and I'm I'm stopping saying it because I know it's going to happen and I'm just impatient I've been saying Marty's going to show up and I always thought that Marty was going to show up with the Bucks and when they showed Mox thing because you know how they had that you know in the beginning yeah. that's oh, yeah. how his old um, video packages were it would do that old like propaganda little yeah. cut yeah but I also they thought it might be on purpose to tease it because at first I was like, no. holy shit, it's happening. And then it was like, bang. And we thought and like, that oh, it's would Mox. sting. We thought that would sting. That's though. true. But yeah, if they tease did. enough of that stuff, then yeah. when you see something similar, you're going to go, oh, it's Mox. And then something changes. You go, oh, shit, wait, no, oh, it's shit, Sting. It's How did I mess that up? And then you go, oh, wait, that's not Sting either. You know what I mean? Like it could actually build towards an honest surprise if you've – got enough little things and other things but i don't know that anybody's thinking that far out or that detailed because i'll be honest i don't think anyone would well i think they if if marty is going to come to play there's something thought out with it and i also think that maybe he might be the one who helps creatively he didn't get to he didn't really get to do that with ring of honor yes the whole pure thing bringing it back was him but I think that that could help them in a way. That could be good. That could be really because good. Because Marty's Actually, got a pretty good creative mind and an eye. So, yeah. To be honest, if if he sat next to Tony Khan for all these shows and started saying, let's do a bigger vision thing, if he became their head booker, even if they were silent about it, I'd be fucking yeah. thrilled. But Who is their head booker? Does anyone they, know? Tony. 
What? It's Tony it's, it's, and and all the talent gets to say what they want to say. It's it's like a committee type thing is the way that Jericho's talked about it and stuff. Where they they like they have no. to clear stuff but they don't really. It's just like they've all explained no. it and they've all thought it was weird. Yeah. No. That's That's awful. why so many things look the same. Because everyone's trying to do things like each other because they think it's cool, but no. there's not one person saying, "Hey, we've already got that happening. Don't do that." That's why a lot of it. Is yeah. Repetitive. Um, something that was not repetitive or didn't seem the same, but really stood out to me on Saturday Night Dynamite, the waiting room with Britt Baker, oh, Rebel God. Teener. Was this supposed to be so bad that it's funny? Was that the idea? Because everyone I thought did a really piss poor job performing. I thought the set looked like shit. I thought well, it was super fucking corny, and I couldn't tell if that was just the point of it. That's the point of it, because you don't watch internet wrestling. So you would <laughs> no. Oh, that's right. This did premiere. So, yes, it, it's supposed to be that way. Is okay. it supposed to be, like, you know, kind of shitty? I, I, I think they so. they nailed it. But then I really think those two don't think it's supposed to be shitty. Or at least Britt Baker doesn't think it's supposed to be kind of shitty. She was the one who seemed to be putting the most effort besides Jade. Everyone else seemed to be like, I'm going to be as awful. But here's the thing. This is my biggest complaint about AEW is I feel like everybody who gets sits down to do a segment starts mm -hmm. off each pitch with, wouldn't it be funny if instead of saying, you know, it would be good or wouldn't it be badass if I feel like everybody goes, wouldn't it be funny if we like, and then the young bucks keep talking except what the young bucks sound like to me. It does not. It's not funny. Yeah. No. I, I wasn't thrilled with it, but I also had got the impression I wasn't supposed to be thrilled with it. I do like that Jade Cargill is getting a little bit more screen time to do stuff. I do think it's interesting that red velvet showed up. I guess there's sort of a story there because she was teaming with Brandy for a short period there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where we go because just off the look of it, red velvet is a losing wrestler. Who's got half the size of Cargill. Yeah. Red velvet was never built like a threat. So you don't see that. This isn't like Taz standing in front of Brock and you go, yeah, but Taz is a mean motherfucker. We've seen him choke out Kurt Angle. And which, I mean, that scenario never happened. But I'm saying, like, if you want to talk about size, if you had had Taz stand in front of Brock, people would say, yeah, but this is a mean dude. Red Velvet has never given off mean motherfucker vibes. She loses a lot of matches. So I just think That's it's a little bit weird. For. Yeah. What, right? Wasn't she there for just that? Yeah, more or less. That's what made it so weird to me. I was all like, oh. Well, let's see what we do, but at no point yeah. am I expecting Red Velvet to win this, and I think that's a bummer. Well, I don't think she's supposed to win it. That's nope. that's the thing. No, she's not supposed to win it. But then but it's she's like, well, supposed to won. be believable. Well, right? Like, there's a certain level a where it's all like, her. yes, you're not going to win. I don't expect you to win. Like Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns. Yes, mm -hmm. Kevin Owens isn't going to win that match. But there's moments where I start to think, oh my God, Kevin Owens is going to beat Roman Reigns. And going into sure. the match, you go, yeah, of course Kevin Owens won't take the title off Roman. Roman's only had the title for a short period of time. But I could see Kevin Owens with the universal title. So there's got to be that shadow of a doubt, even if it's a small shadow, that, well, there's every reason to think that they could. you know, Or, like, I mean, Goldberg versus Drew. Most anticipated match of 2021. Everyone's all like, well, obviously Drew has to win. It's Goldberg, yeah. and Goldberg wins a lot. So yeah. I think that you need those, I don't know, even in the obvious cases, for it to be a match that I'm going to truly give a shit about. This feels like a segment that could have been on Dark. It could have been on Being the Elite. I didn't have to see it, and it's not building towards something I'm interested in. Because we still don't have Shaq. Um, Justin's yeah, in the chat I saying, I hated this segment. Not a fan of Britt Baker. Thank you, Justin. Big not fans of Britt Baker over here. Uh, Why are Jay you Cargill. Fans of Britt Baker? Oh, only because I've seen her and know how bad it is to watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, I don't like to use terms like overrated and stuff like that because I don't think this whole rating structure for the internet makes any sense. But I will say that given the amount of hype that I've seen around her, I was awfully surprised by what I actually saw in ring and what I mm-hmm. heard on the mic because given the hype, there was an expectation there that was not met. And I would say even as I watched this person grow into their role, I have yet to become truly impressed by anything or feel like, yes, this is a top star. There's, I don't think there's any star power here. I don't think that... I mean, when because we were just talking about Marty Scroll and I said dream match as an idea of like, can you imagine Marty Scroll with Pete Dunne? Can you imagine Marty Scroll with Adam Cole, with Kyle O'Reilly, with Ilya Dragunov, a guy in, you know, in NXT UK? Ask me about any match for Britt Baker. Where I go, you know what would be a great match? I cannot think of one. Because we've seen her against great wrestlers have mediocre matches. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it with her. So, I'm not a big fan just because of that. Again, like I've said in almost every of our episode one, starting a couple weeks ago, I love eating crow. It's my favorite thing. So, I can't wait for the day that I come back on episode one and say, you know what? A match was the match of the night. Britt Baker's last night. I can't uh-huh. wait for that day because crow is my favorite dinner. I don't know about that one, though. It's not going to fucking happen. She's just awful. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, she's okay. I, I mean, kidding. you know. But what Justin was saying is Jade Cargill is all talk, no action, not to mention the story she's in is horrible. Thunder Rosa and Red Velvet's appearance was the only good thing about this. And Bishop said, very measured definition of trash. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I But I agree with that. So this is kind of a horrible story. Jade's whole thing is like, Shaq's not going to like this. And you're like, Shaq is busy making pizza and rubbing icy hot all over his body. And it's basketball season. And it's basketball season. Charles Barkley. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. If there's one thing I know, he takes baths in icy hot while he's eating pizza from an iPad. So, and I, I agree Thunder Rosa was badass. I wish her audio was better. I wish they asked her to re-record that. I wish they sent her a fucking microphone. I wish she told me she needed help. I would have done any of those things. If she told me, hey, I need a mic, I'm going to be cutting promos from home, I would have sent her my old one. Like, yeah. And I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to be an idiot about that. I've I, we, we sponsored Mission Pro. We intend to sponsor the next show, too. I have emailed her back and forth. Uh, so, you know, friend of the show, us, we do support her. We do love Thunder Rosa here. Um but yeah, I was really surprised by the lack of had, audio quality on that. Yeah, they could have had Colt the podcast god, you know. But... Yeah, fucking send her some stuff, dude. You yeah. know? <laughs> like, come on. Cheap. Um, so. I did like Red Velvet just getting some airtime, so I agree with that. The Let's see. All talking, no action. So that's what I was going to say. Jade being all talking, no action. Someone, I believe it was GR Lunar, hit me up offline and asked me, do we know how well she wrestles? He goes, I don't. Or he said, I don't know how what her wrestling is like. So I don't know if I should be excited yet. And I was like, that's the thing. None of us do know. None of us have seen her wrestle. She has not wrestled on any kind of televised thing. And she's here because she's a basketball player. She, she came through the WNBA. Oh, is that where she came through? Yeah. That's why she knows Shaq. That's why she knows Tony Khan. Yeah. Why she's a hundred feet tall and all muscle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's a WNBA star, which I just recently had found out too. And it all clicked. I went, Oh, so I do think that, I mean, it comes from that whole like athletic background stuff, right? I mean, um, Jim Ross was always talking about it back in the day, about the blue chippers, them doing yeah. this sport and that. So I think 100% possibility she's great in the ring. But we don't know. Like you said, all talk, no action. She's great modeling in front of like Lamborghinis. That's a good point. That's the only thing I've seen, you know? So I don't, yeah. know. I don't know how she is as a basketball player now because this is all news to me now, so I don't know. It's a good point. I don't know if she can dunk. I don't know. Uh, Probably but, better so, than me. That segment, I guess, was what it was, but I don't know where we're supposed to be doing. Why is why is Cody in this story at this because point? He should he, be in something else. Well, because remember Shaq, and he has a little penis, according to Jade. And oh, yeah. Jade said he had yeah. a little wiener. Mm-hmm. A little diddly. Mm-hmm. A little nightmare, right. as it were. Oh. <laughs> well, you can't use that now. They do have a little nightmare on the way. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> can't use that. <laughs> um, but I think also, too, it was to get people excited about Britt Baker's segment and not turn the channel. Mm-hmm. 
I think so too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it was what it was. The thing that really is really like ticking me off is they're having this huge pull apart with a million people wrestling and they're all going in and out of this door, but the camera keeps panning to the side where you could see the edge of the wall as it's yeah. clearly a TV set. And you're like, why are they just, why are they fucking using the door? You could see behind it and around it, and it was just fucking dumb, man. I mean, and maybe yeah. that was just part of it. it was like, wouldn't it be funny if we just if you could see how mm-hmm. funny? I don't know, guys. I don't know what. Then wouldn't it be like a waiting room? That's a good point. I don't know. I feel like in Scrubs, you don't know what's funny, Elliot. Like a big phone is funny. Hello. 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 Giant phone pantomimes. That's what I feel yep. like when I watch this show. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, what it is. <laughs> let's see ftr got their asses kicked by jungle boy and marco stump but they eventually won so that was fine serena deep and tape conti oh <gasps> i want to talk about that talk about oh. it was, was there anything you want to say about ftr and jungle express no yeah i was fine because with it. honestly like it went it went where i knew it was gonna go it went where i was going i wasn't impressed by how long it was it could have been shorter yeah it but it was, was fine short. I can't wait for the day that Jungle Boy has gotten so jacked he can't do that stupid hanging off of Luchador's shoulders anymore. Luchador just goes, dude, I just fucking can't hold you up like that. <laughs> oh, I don't think Jack's going to get that jacked. He's getting honest. bigger. He's definitely he putting on size. He is. He is. The only thing I, I like about that is I'm really glad that Tony bought the Baltimore song. I thought you would. I if thought I... you would like that goofy shit. What? Hey, <laughs> you know what? And you know what? Since you know Jack Jungle Boy, I'm calling him Jack. Like, well, I do know him, but Jungle Boy. I mean, that's what he came out to. And you know, yeah, I saw him I think when he was mean. not even you know, like three, four years ago, almost. Yeah, and I remember it like, yeah, yeah. nothing's really yeah, yeah. changed. Yeah, which I think yeah. is funny. Um, I don't know how much. I don't. I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah. I, I, was I wasn't funny. as impressed as I knew his indie fans would be. And I'm I'm glad. That I know. I'm one of those. You you haven't lived life until you've gone to PWG and he comes out and that whole crowd sings along with it. It's the best feeling in the world. It's one of the best feelings in the world. That's dope. His yeah. dad got to see that at least once, right? He did. He did. Um, he was there when I met his dad. Um, it was his uh, first ever PWG match. And, and his family is so, 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 so supportive. That's, right. That's what I mean. They're so supportive and stuff. But they got to see that happen with the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. That's so good, man. I love that shit. I love it. Because so, well, yeah. that was his first so, time. But it was such a great, you know, it's such yeah. a great entrance. And everyone just, like, lost their shit. That, you Which know. is dope. Which is dope. I, I as, as, as much as I know it's not for me, I knew there was a lot of people really excited. So I was just happy that I was happy. That would be me. Though, so. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking I wanted those. Really yes. Yeah. Um, so Serena Deep and Tay Conti, I was not expecting a lot out of this match. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Tay Conti, I have not been super impressed with mm-hmm. match by match. Although I've been very excited about her matches. I do think I've seen a ton of growth in her matches since even she was in NXT. I remember watching her when she first came out and thought, oh, there's a lot of promise here. I can see why they would sign this person. But going into this match, I was like, I don't know what we're going to get out of take Conti with a Serena Deeb that's going to make me truly interested and by the edge of the, by the end of this match I was definitely at the edge of my seat thinking this is fucking tremendous this may have been the best match of the night to be honest uh, I think Amanda so. what did you want to say about this yeah you know you can obviously tell with Serena Deeb how much of an influence she is and elevates people's game because honestly Tia Conti I didn't I, same thing I didn't think that she'd be all that this would be be okay you know, it's what mm-hmm. five minutes of filler, if anything. I thought it's going to be quick, but it wasn't. And I was like, uh, I know it's coming next. You know, what's going on? But it was incredible to see that you see the potential of yeah. what the women can do. Because I think Serena is now also training. I, th- I haven't listened to her, the podcast she did. I know she, they put her on with uh, Shivani and uh, Bad Ref, which Bad yeah, Ref was um, bad again last awful. night too. Um, and, and during this match too, yeah, Aubrey. She was I'm sorry. I just, no. There was a time where it was again, you know, she, it's, I'm like, I don't know what you're doing, Aubrey. 
but you're missing counts. So, yeah. it, but and it wasn't. I can't busy. stand that she keeps putting that stripe down her arm now. She's trying to find out, figure out other ways to stand out, and I'm like, stop it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's like don't. You stand out because you're a woman. Okay, let that be enough right now. Just calm down. But yeah, no, I I, I enjoyed it just because of the potential it brings to the women because I think that everybody should at least have a match with Serena even if it's on if it's on dark I don't care where it is just because of the caliber of the wrestling I mean she could teach a lot of these people things obviously no you don't want like a blood lady what's her face Abaddon Abaddon. yeah you don't want no that'd be kind of weird I don't want her even signed so she is signed (laughs) I don't want her to be is what I'm saying. Well, I She's know. one of the I know. ones they... online where if she blocked me, I'd be like, no loss. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of wrestlers where I go, man, sometimes I talk shit and I just, I don't want them to block me. Like, I don't really want Jericho to block me. But if Abaddon what? blocked me, I'd be like, okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't even know. notice probably, to be honest. Probably. No, no. I've gotten blocked. Who's blocked you? Uh, hold on. Producer just looked at me like, you're, you're getting blocked. Did you get us blocked by someone? No. Okay. Did I? She riles no. up. Producer no. riles up Renee Young, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Renee's so, like, I don't She's know. She's so nice. She responded to me. She put out a thing where she was, like, ragging, like talking about the sweater she was wearing, and mm-hmm. behind her was a stand-up of a bear. And I just tweeted at her because I was like, I don't think I could make a comment on the Instagram. I think she'd blocked the comments because I think that makes it smart. And I just mm-hmm. did a message to her, not a direct message, but just, you know, added her. And I was like, I got to know what's going on with that stand up bear in your latest post. Like 15 minutes later, she's all like, oh, let me tell you about it. And like fucking went talked about how Moxley had gotten it to scare her and put it in the bathroom upstairs or some shit. And she goes, and the dick. thing worked, scared the poop emoji right out of me. And I was like, what That's a hysterical. dick. Oh, I would have kicked him. <laughs> Bread basket. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> But it's a good story. But, yeah. And it was nice. It was cool that she responded to me. I was like, that's really cool that she saw that. And she goes, yeah, I'll tell them. Um, mm-hmm. Justin does say, take Conti hung in there very well with a veteran. I agree. I thought it was great. Something I, okay. So something that's really been bothering me is a lot of these moves. And De Conti does one. It's called the take, the take KO, which everything's going to be a goddamn clever name. It's these moves. And I think Peyton Royce does one too, where like it's back to back. They lift you up a little bit. And then, so the person getting hit has to tuck their legs up and over and around your waist. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you do some sort of thing to them. But they're having to, like, bend their legs backwards and hook them on your own waist for for the move to go off. I can't stand that. A bunch of the moves are like that. And take take the take KO is like that. She lifts you up onto her shoulders a little bit. It's back to back. And then Serena D would have to hook her own feet on on Tay's hips for tay to hit it and when she lifted her up serena kept her legs straight and that's how she countered it she just didn't do the move for you and it's one of those things where it's like your finish should be as they say something you can hit on everyone but it also shouldn't be in my mind a thing where everyone has to put themselves in it and there's too many of those that are out there where it's like it looks cool for a second but when you think about it for more than a second you go wait why would you just leave your legs down and serena did it I thought it was fucking a great little piece of, I'm going to counter it because your finisher is stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was also, I think, probably a learning thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I, I do think it could be it could be part of it, and I hope that we actually see a different finisher for, for Tay Conti. Uh, in the chat, P- Bishop says, you leave the pseudo-national treasure, Renee Young alone, producer lady. She is a Canadian <laughs> national treasure. Hello. Okay. But she she also has a cookbook, and she was, like, burning some food, so. So she had it coming. So, I mean, I didn't put that out there. I just asked for Corbin's help because he's always barbecuing. I honestly thought he was going to, like, I don't know, DM her some tips or something, and nope, not, not what happened. And it said, Corbin, of all people, Corbin threw you under the bus. How could he? <laughs> So it actually was not intentional. <laughs> she's all trying to talk shit about Renee. And she's like, Baron Corbin, come talk shit too. And Corbin's all like, fuck you, dude. 
<laughs> You're on your own here. And then she's like, how could this happen? <laughs> I wasn't trying. <laughs> so funny. So funny. You're going to talk shit, talk shit. <laughs> Suffer the consequences. <laughs> That's been a couple was... wrestlers that have blocked me. I was trying to help. <laughs> Just trying to help. I'm trying to sell cookbooks here. <laughs> Anyways, anyways, uh, anything else about that match you wanted to say other than it was just fantastic? No. I was surprised. I think it was match of the night. However, the match that ended the show was also pretty dang good overall. Darby Allen versus Brian Cage for the TNT Championship. Mm-hmm. There was spots here and there I wasn't fond of or thrilled with. And mm-hmm. overall, I think that Brian Cage gives too much in my mind. He this does. dude could be the biggest, meanest motherfucker in all of wrestling who everyone would be behind, but we keep seeing him lose to people who don't look like or even perform yeah, like lost. they stack up against him. He, he keeps losing yet. in... What? He hasn't lost yet. This was his first What are you talking loss? about? No, he lost to Mox. Oh, and maybe. and I mean even before this, he's lost to Tessa Blanchard like twice. Oh, oh, outside of the the AEW world. Oh, okay. Well, I'm saying before AEW, he loses to women, and then I mean not not to say that Tessa Blanchard's not a fucking main eventer. She is. Yeah. She's fantastic, and I honestly want to see her come back. But I do. I'm saying that he's giving, he's too giving if he's putting over literally all these people. If it was also, I mean, it's sort of like what I said about Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. When he was l- winning against everybody in TNT title matches, but taking 30 minutes to do it and people who we'd never mm-hmm. heard of and never saw, it didn't mean as much when Brody beat the shit out of him. Because you're all like, well, yeah, he has a really tough time with indie talent. Of course he couldn't take on a Brody. Brody's a yeah. real actual wrestler. He's a real mm-hmm. mean motherfucker. He's a multi-time champion. Of course he couldn't take on a real champion. That's how it looks. When Cody gives so much to the people we don't know about, it's just that little stuff that's in the back of your mind. If it takes him 30 minutes to take out Warhorse, who quite frankly looked incredibly green out there, then not the best Warhorse match. It was not the best Warhorse match. Nope. Maybe the nerves were there. I don't know. But he gave so much to Warhorse that by the time Brody Lee comes in, you're like, of course Brody's going to murder him. Of course. Yep. Cody hasn't wrestled a real man in a long time. I don't mean real man as in man versus women and all that stuff. I'm not trying to underplay anybody else he fought. I'm just saying. Brody's a big motherfucker, a mean dude. So, of course. And so the same thing comes out to here where Brian Cage loses to Tessa. He loses to Darby Allen. It kind of undermines the other people's wins. You know what I mean? Where if he'd only lost to Tessa but didn't lose to like a Darby or a Mox. You go, man, Tessa's so good. She beat him and he's beating all these other people, but he gives so much. It makes everyone else look so good. It's just, I just feel like he's getting wasted over here. I feel like I don't know what they're doing. I I don't, with him, I don't know. I don't think that they, uh, well, he wasn't supposed to win that belt. That, I mean, honestly, like he, that's not for him. Um, I don't see him in that kind of, I don't, do you want to put him in a match? No, well, I know, but they, that, that dumb ranking system, but did it, but here's my question to you is, do you see him more of kind of that, more of that main event, like, an like with Omega box, those kinds of, those yes. kinds of challengers rather than yeah. the TNT one? Like, what's your take yeah. on that? I feel like Brian Cage, had he not had these losses on the way over, and had he not been walking around, I mean, he's got he's given the FTW title. He looks like a kid on Christmas. And Taz goes, this belt goes to the toughest SOB in the whole business. Two and weeks he- later, that motherfucker throws in the towel because he goes, yeah, there's no way he was going to win that match. He just couldn't win it. And he could say all he wants about, I was saving him, I was protecting him, this and that. Bottom line, you gave up on behalf of your dude because he wasn't good enough to get the job done. You made him look weak. Now, yeah. he's lost to fucking Darby Allen, mm-hmm. who's 70 pounds soaking wet. Not that weight has anything that has everything to do with it, but it has something to do with it. And he's, and then at the at the end of the, I mean, it was funny. I, I tweeted out as a joke. I was like, and still, your FTW champion, 
Brian Cage. I got I mean, it. Like, I got the. I got the joke. <laughs> yeah, but it's like he's losing. He's supposed to be the toughest motherfucker, but he doesn't come out and talk tough. His coach doesn't put him over like he's super tough. He cowers down to Sting. He loses to Darby Allen. Taz gave up for him. Like I mean, it's, it doesn't add up. And to me, when I watch him in the ring and I watched him in this match, I thought, "Fuck, this dude's amazing." The way he like picked up Darby. Okay, there's a couple times he picked up Darby like a fucking doll. There's the yeah, one like, where he picks him up over his head, throws him like thirty oh, yeah. feet into a table. I was and like, he's oh, like, oh, shit. oh. <laughs> yeah. that was a spot right there. I was like, oh. Yeah. And Damn. I was like, you know what's fucked up? I bet you Darby told him to do it. I bet you Brian's like, Probably. I don't want to do that, dude. And Darby's like, dude, you can get me over there. And Brian's like, I, don't, I could, but come on, man. You're a human being. And Darby's like, fucking do it, bitch. I don't you know what I mean? Like, care. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like that's how it went. And he then he looks for that shit. I mean, yeah, yeah, Darby loves that shit. And then the mm-hmm. other move that Brian does, there at one point he walks over, Darby's sitting there face down in the mat. He grabs mm-hmm. Darby by the back of his belt, dead center, oh, middle yeah. of his back, mm-hmm. and lifts him up, deadlifts him without even squatting his legs. Yeah. Deadlifts him with his arm, <laughs> stiff arm up, over Brian Cage's own head, and then throws Darby back down. You just mm-hmm. deadlifted another man over your head and threw him. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I might make jokes about Darby being small, but I'm not deadlifting that motherfucker with one arm. No, I can't even deadlift a damn, like, a little, like, chihuahua, probably. Yeah. So it's being something. 100%. Yeah. So I just think that, that Brian should be somewhere somewhere further down the uh, in the card. He shouldn't be losing his matches. Shouldn't be in his matches. And he shouldn't be cowering down to Sting, who did show up. And then they were three minutes late on the snow. In my mind, and I see I see Bishop in the chat. He wants to talk about NXT so bad. We're going to wrap this up, go to NXT right now. But I did, in my mind, I was laughing at the idea of Tony Khan being out there being like, Where's the snow? Where's the fucking <laughs> yeah. snow? Get the snow going. See, he's there. There's no snow. Are you out of your mind? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what we were doing the whole time. <laughs> That's I'm, how I, I imagined it going. I will say that I think Brian Cage would be better suited to do tag with Will Hobbs. Because you have two big, badass motherfuckers that could probably destroy buildings. It's like that uh, video game Rampage when the, you know, the dinosaurs or whatever the hell climb up the building and they just destroy. Yeah, that's those two. Now, I will say, kudos to Ricky Starks for getting hit by the bat, taking one for the team. Sting finally does something against Ricky Starks. Yeah, and his Gucci slide stayed on when he fell over the hole because I was like, oh, the stairs are... I was like, oh, you don't lose a shoe, and he didn't lose a shoe. But I was really concerned. Like, pick, can someone pick him off the ground, please? I'm sure he doesn't want to be laying on the ground like that. Can you? Can one of you guys on stage pick him up? He's scuffing Somebody. his velvet. Uh, yeah, his velour or whatever. <laughs> or whatever whatever i'm like yeah 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 yeah. but but props to him for taking it in in the in the the whatever yeah he took good two two good stiff bats by sting Mm -hmm. it's pretty good it was really good i hope it was a gimmick bat because otherwise ricky's fucked (laughs) Mm, i think he's okay uh, yeah. Justin does say in the chat, I got to say, I'm not a fan of the AEW world championship and TNT championship having the same rankings, which is true. The TNT championship mm-hmm. needs its own rankings, which is super true. Um, mm-hmm. he also says Brian Cage is in the Lance Archer position. He gets big title matches and looks dominant, but doesn't get the job done. And I mm-hmm. do think that they have a way of making Brian Cage and Lance Archer both look weak in defeat and not strong in defeat. I think they have a hard time booking those matches. So yeah. I agree with that as well. Bishop trying to throw the shade back at me. Not happening. (laughs) Um, I'm excited about the idea of conceptually, if Ricky Starks is the first person that gets in the ring with, with sting. Cause I think that Ricky Starks is an incredibly safe worker. He's an incredible workhorse of a worker. I think it would be a cool feather in the cap for Ricky on a personal level. So in those regards, I think that'd be so cool to see Ricky get those opportunities from the other side of things. I'm still not interested in seeing Sting wrestle at all. I don't know that we need him in the ring with anybody, but I also think that Sting needs to start doing something. So um, I don't know. Say what you want to say. 
about the rest of that show, and then we'll kick it over to NXT, Amanda. You know, the only other thing I, I have to say about it is um, it's going to be really interesting how the next one in line, because the next one in line is Ricky for that belt, the TNT Championship. And I have a feeling, and I have a feeling that it's going to be at Revolution. And you heard it here first. I'm saying Ricky will win the belt at Revolution. Because why? The beginning of his song, the Revolution is televised. Oh, shit. I'm good. going deep. Going deep. You're going way deep. When I saw Sting hit Ricky with the bat, I thought, oh, shit, I bet Ricky wishes he still had that body bag. He could have just painted the other side of the bag. Yeah. Since it didn't go. And he just gave it away. I was I so I tried I to win it for you, but. I know. I know. I, I even asked, can I have it? If you're just going to give it away, I'll give you, I'll donate money. Yeah. You know, but it's okay. But I would say all in all, not a shit video. episode at all. It was okay. It was decent. It was a decent dynamite, but it didn't but feel like a special show. for a New Year's show. show. Shitty. Yeah. Yeah, for a Don't special show, it, it didn't feel special. And there's definitely a lot of things happening there I'm not excited about. But all in all, I had a fun time watching it. But I think it's also because I try to continue to watch the show with the filter that it's just like watching Saturday Night Live. You're going to see a ton of comedy skits. Some of the guys are good at comedy. Some of the guys are still getting there. You're going to you're gonna like some of it. You're not going to like other bits of it. You're going to see some star cameos. I watch it like I watch Saturday Night Live, and it makes it a lot easier to digest. So I had fun in that regard, but I was super excited an hour later to turn on a wrestling show. NXT. 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 They started their Dusty Classic. I put out my bracket. So far, I'm three for three. I am a good tag team booker. You heard it here first. I'm a booker now. I didn't do a I didn't do a bracket, but I know who's gonna win. I'll say. All that. right. Well, then do do a bracket. You can even put in in gray. I'll send you the bracket if you want to do it. Yeah, send me the bracket, and I'll say back to you. But yeah, yeah, and we'll post it. Um, so the show opened up. It had a lot of tag matches, so we don't need to break down each one of those because it's part of the tournament. But it did open up with Shotzi Blackheart versus Candice LeRae. God, I'm trying to remember. I think this match was pretty fucking good, wasn't it? Yeah. You didn't, I didn't cringe at Shotzi, like being worried for her. Correct. And producer had something she wanted to say about that too. Oh, oh yeah. I think she's, she's improving. There were, I do remember there being some points where you were confused at the moves that both of them were doing because they weren't doing anything to opponents. This is true. That was, I think that was your only complaint. I think Shotzi's definitely getting a lot better in the ring. I think that the lack of Serena Deeb in the locker room is showing. <laughs> I think there was a couple of times they were trying to do mat wrestling and trying to do hold for holds uh, types of reversals. But Shotzi Blackheart put on an arm bar opposite twice, which is absolutely no, no pressure at all. Candice LeRae had a headlock in that didn't even have the headlock around the head. She just basically yeah. had her arms in a circle like this, and she was pulling apart on her arms. So you're like, so Shotzi's just resting in there. Like, it was... The, what made Ronda Rousey so good at those holds is she knows how they actually manipulate limbs to hurt people and then knows how if you do one thing slightly wrong, it doesn't work. Because that's how you learn those things. Hey, look, at if you do it like this, you're going to rip someone's tendon. If you do it like this, slightly different, nothing's happening. That's why you got to do it the other way because she's trying to... So you have to know both ways to do it. They were doing moves that were like, well, if I just wrap my arm around your arms, it'll look like your arms all tied up. Right. And you're like, no, no, not exactly. It doesn't look like there's pressure being applied. You know what I mean? Mm. Apart from the idea of that, they're not two great mat wrestlers. They did do the rest of the wrestling stuff very well. And they told a good story. And I really liked it. And like you said, there were no moments where I felt like, oh my God, Shotzi's going to kill people. Yeah. Maybe even herself, but yeah. It was really good. It seemed like a nice match. It see, I, I had no it's good way to open. They both were really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I only great had the one to... complaint. But I yeah, saw. I see what you were saying. I see it. Yeah, I see it. But there's Did not you... really that many women who are really good mat technicians, though. 
Right. So you had like Shayna Baszler, who was in NXT for a long time, who would have been great oh, yeah. for that stuff. Oh, sure. Marina, we haven't seen the Marina in a while. Jessamyn Duke, we don't know where she's at. But they would probably be great in the locker room to, to talk hold for hold. Shayna talked mm-hmm. about coaching people in the back all the time about, oh, you could do this to reverse this, or how would you reverse that? Like that was constant conversations mm-hmm. that were happening. But right now you have a bunch of indie wrestlers trying to figure out how to make it look good. Yeah, and I don't think Sarah Del Rey, because I know she's the head trainer, I don't think that Sarah... Um, when she was wrestling, I don't, that wasn't her, that wasn't her thing. Her thing. You know who so. they should all train with? Thatcher. Oh, yes. Get some Thatcher Thatch can. But I hear oh, he's yes. a really mean guy. I hear he's really mean. He's mean. He's actually, I've seen him. He's really a nice guy. Yeah, but he's mean. He's got that tooth missing. Mean guy. So? No no nice guy has, has missing teeth. No, he's, he's nice. It's deceptively nice then. No, he's mean. I've seen him. That's why Tom. That's why Champa doesn't like him. He's mean. Okay, um. <laughs> Champa can be mean too. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was a great way to open the show. Yeah. Really good character work on both their parts, uh, and then they started announcing some of the matches for the the women's Dusty Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, Gristled Young Veterans versus Everrise. I kind of didn't watch all this match. I'm not going to lie because I knew Grizzled Young Vets would win, and yeah. I'm not really into Everrise. Am I missing something with them? No. Because I'm not into them at all. I don't. I don't know. Did you ever see them on the indies? What are their real names or their indie names? No fucking clue. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you did, they didn't stand out. Well, obviously they didn't stand out. But I'm curious now. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here. Um, Let me look. If you did, I'd be curious just because. To me, they feel like knockoff best friends, and I'm not a fan of best friends. And I don't know. They feel kind of like a, a lesser than Breezango, and I actually don't enjoy Breezango very much. Although I know that they're all incredibly talented and very good, I'm not personally invested in those characters. I do want to try to stress that a little bit. I know sometimes, and especially a lot of these a lot of these fucking stupid shows that are out there, people try to rip on the people and stuff. That's not what we're doing here ever. We're talking about literally what we're intaking. Do I care about these characters versus the people? There's a good chance I have a ton of respect for every single name we ever say. Even if I say, yeah, fuck that person. Except for when it comes to Sean Spears. Fuck that person as a person. He's a shitty person. Fuck Sean, fuck Sean Spears. He's one I'd love to get blocked by. If he's even got Twitter, I'm a fucker probably deactivated. Because fuck Sean. He's a dick, dude. Tell- really? There are some stories. We've, we've yes. had fan interaction has not been great. Four times. I've met this piece of shit. And every goddamn time he's a fucking dick to not only me, but everyone around him. I've never seen what? him be nice to another human being. Oh, he was cool. He was cool when I met him. Twice. No, don't you fucking start. Don't you I'm not starting. Either. I don't know. Maybe it's because <laughs> I'm a girl. I don't know. Uh, I was, I don't I was know. there for one of them. I don't know. With, with Marsh. I was there. And yeah, he, he wanted nothing to do with us. Yeah just a dick and we weren't even dick. like running up and trying to be like super fans we i think a nod would have just been fine you know like a, hey what's up hey hey you know the first time i ran into him it was at royal rumble we were booked in the same hotel as him that has nothing to do with me i didn't book the hotel wwe did i bought the big package <laughs> i did it well i'm that's getting the off the elevator travel people's fault for doing yeah that. but yeah and i think that's part of the experience it's what they want right because you're gonna hang out the bar and who else is gonna be at the bar some of the wrestlers and you know what I got to drink with some wrestlers and hang out with people and talk to wrestlers. It was cool. So I get that. That's all part of it, right? So Sean Spears hasn't been on TV in over nine fucking months. He's not even been seen. I get off the elevator. It turns out I'm on the same floor as him because he's waiting for the elevator. I've got all my shit in my hands. And I just look up and I go, oh, shit, Ty. I think it's because it's Ty Dillinger. I was like, Ty. I was like, awesome, man. Nice to see you. And he just goes, oh, my God. And fucking, like, rolls his eyes and, like, barrels past me. And I'm like, my hands are full. Do you think I'm looking for an autograph? I said, oh, shit, nice to see you because I haven't seen you on TV in nine fucking months. And your response is, fuck that guy? Fuck you, dude. You're lucky I recognized you. Yeah. You know what floor we were on? Ten. I'm kidding. We weren't on ten. It was a Ty Dillinger joke. Oh, and in answer to the question about Everrise, no, I've never seen them. I don't know who they are. Good. (laughs) <laughs> well so i only sort of watch the match yeah they were kind of love obnoxious. they're obnoxious there's weird they feel like a knockoff i'm not i'm not a fan but the grizzly young vets i do like a lot i just had a yeah. feeling they were gonna win and they did i'm excited to see where they go down the road here 
Mm-hmm. It did follow with Johnny Gargano versus Dexter, Dexter Loomis. Loomis was doing some really cool, weird athletic stuff. Different mm-hmm. kinds of roles that I thought were really awkward, but fucking perfectly performed. Um, I don't know. What do you want to say about this match? I'm not a fan of jo- Johnny Gargano. I wasn't a fan of him winning. I I, I don't get it. Know, I don't get what people see in him to a large degree, to be honest. And I'm sure he's a really nice guy who works really hard. I'm not trying to take that away from him. Uh, I, you know, honestly, like I didn't have anything really to take away from this because it was, I mean, just another Gargano match where he's going to win. And yes, he's got an opponent doing cool shit. But other than that, no. Yes, that's what it felt like, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't have any, inve- I have more investment in his wife and would yes. rather watch his wife than him. I've been so impressed by Candace's delivery and this stuff, especially in these little segments that they do, these stupid yeah. fucking comedy bits. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch them, I'm I'm so annoyed at his delivery and think, man, he is so bad at comedy. He thinks mm-hmm. he's being funny and his timing is so off. His timing oh, yeah. is so shitty. He sounds so scripted. And when she talks, I go, she's got a natural timing with her. She's got some natural yeah. chops with her. She seems authentic, even though you can tell she's being a character because you just know that humans aren't the way that they're pretending to be. Yeah. She comes off way natural and is actually funny and has good timing. Unless you're Sammy Guevara, you're a piece of, little piece of shit. Actually, it sounds like we're reviewing the TW Takes podcast. <laughs> I'm burning that guy if he's in the chat. We'll see. We'll see if he's still awake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Gorgano, but, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't get I don't I don't get it. I mean, is that why he's stuck in NXT peril? Is because they don't know what to do with him? I wonder if it's because there's nothing left to do with him at all. Like not knowing what to do is one thing, but I don't think there's like what else are you gonna do with him? What what else is really all relevant? I don't feel like him having the national title means much. Um let's mm-hmm. see Justin says, I didn't expect Johnny Gargano to lose to Dexter Loomis, even though he should have, especially after Kushida pinned him at New Year's Evil. 100%. Going into this match, I thought, this is the move. This is where you put that title on Dexter Loomis. And then you have, for a reason, a creepy motherfucker with a title. And now people have to face their fears to try and take it off of them because they want that title. Yeah. It being on Gargano isn't interesting to me. But if it was on Dexter, I'd be like, well, shit, who's going to want to challenge him? You know what I mean? And then you get some interesting stories there. Yeah. Um, Oh, take says, uh, Bishop says in the chat, want want the wife more than the husband. Sounds like my podcast found on all platforms. So he, he saw it coming. (laughs) He knew what was happening. (laughs) Good point. What? Why'd you look at me like that? I'm saying it's found on all platforms. That's a good point. So funny. Uh, let's see. Wasn't that Dexter Loomis's first loss as well? Was that his first clean loss? I thought he lost to. I thought he lost to somebody in a weird way, but maybe he didn't. That might have been his first loss. Which, if that's also the case, fuck, man. Why? What does Gargano Why have? Waste? Yeah. Yes. A waste of a of a win against Dexter on somebody who doesn't need it. What is Johnny stands to gain nothing by beating anybody in NXT right now. But. A Cameron Grimes or or fuck who else is just I feel like there's some newer guys on like Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed beating Dexter Loomis could have been a big thing. Oh yeah. Oh my god, no one's beat Bron- uh, you know, oh my god, no one's beat Dexter Loomis and Bronson Reed just does it and you go, Holy shit, this guy's And colossal. now you can't say that. <laughs> now yeah. it's like Ugh! Yeah, and now they're all like, Oh yeah, this guy also lost to a tiny little child sized man. Yeah. <laughs> It's so dry, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So dry. Splinter Fox coming through. What up, Splinter Fox? Cheers. Thank you for coming through, Splinter. I don't think you came through. I'm going to cheers you real quick. But the day, the, the, the show after where you asked us that question, we opened the show with it. So if you go back to our podcast, uh, anywhere you find podcast, find it. It was, I believe, two Thursdays ago. The third, Either last Thursday or the Thursday before. Oh, it was last Thursday. You said go to the podcast platform, download it. You could even go to youtube.com. You can go to wrestling on the rocks.com and still find it. Um, the beginning of the show, we open up with your question, all of us. So it's there. 
Uh, and we even had chat. We even had people in the chat answering the same question. So you actually, I think, really like it. So go back, watch it, list, watch it, or listen to it. Check out the first, the first, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Let's see. Uh, Justin says either that or it was the second time because I believe his first loss may have been to Austin Theory. If Austin Theory beat Dexter Loomis, that could be true too. Austin Theory's fucking. That's dude. He's before big. my watching time. Yeah, um, but I don't know. Overall, I think this was the wrong choice. I think you should have gone Dexter Loomis. I'd have been interested, but here we are. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know where to go now. I mean, Gargano just yeah. There's nothing. It's just it's waste now. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, what's going to happen? At, you know, like what's the build to Takeovers n- the next big one, right? Yeah. On Valentine's Day, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, producer, what do you want to say? Yeah, I'm I'm really really not into his acting and I I don't I don't know. I I kind of want to see him away from like away from the wife just because I'm really interested in in her segments, but then he comes in and I'm just so uninterested. Um I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. I, I find myself playing on my phone more when Johnny Gargano comes out or actually just leaving the room altogether or I, I don't find myself even watching his stuff because I've it doesn't feel new. It doesn't feel fresh. It feels repetitive. It feels the same over and over again. He doesn't have a different type of delivery. I don't find him funny. I don't find him clever. So it's just it's hard for me to get through his stuff. So I just try to avoid it so I can watch the rest of the stuff because – like on this show, the following segment was Jake Atlas and Isaiah Scott versus MSK. And I was super excited to find out who MSK was. They've been tweeting about it. They showed a, a logo. It's they, uh, they showed the brackets and MSK was all grayed out, like those little vacant tag teams. And I was like, that's weird. They have a name but no faces. Strange. Um, let's see. Splinter Fox says, let me guess. The next takeover will be Valentine's Day Massacre. That would be a nod to the pay-per-view a long time ago. They haven't said the name of it yet, I don't believe, but I hope it is Valentine's Day Na- Massacre. Um, so, Jake Atlas and Isaiah Scott come out there. They're an interesting team. They've been they've been having a rivalry for quite some time, so it would make sense they may not click, but they actually did click very well. But the team that came out, MSK, Nash Carter, and Wes Lee, you know them as the Rascals, and under other monikers, this is the first time I'd seen them wrestle. And I'll tell you, from the second they came out, I thought, these kids move differently than I see people move. Just in general, like their physical movements were a little bit more fluid, but super controlled, just even in the ring. Or even in their entrance, you know what I mean? I'm going to say this, and then I want you to talk about the Rascals as you know them, Amanda. Okay. Watching this team, I felt like... First off, Nash Carter was, he wasn't the body of the group, right? You see Wes and his body and you go, that dude's jacked. You see oh, yeah. his, his partner and you go, come on, dude, you could lift some weights before you make your, your, your first appearance, you know? But they both moved incredibly. I thought their tandem offense, actual tandem offense, mind you, not synchronized offense, which I have a huge problem with. Tag teams using synchronized offense in lieu of tandem offense. They did moves together to make the moves better. The assisted standing moonsault, fucking crazy. You can't watch that move enough and understand it. So good. I think Wesley wrestles like Kev- Kenny Omega thinks he wrestles. Wesley was super flippy. Does the flippy floppies, right? But he laid his shit in. He looked like he was hitting people the whole fucking time. And he moved like a video game. There's two types of video game wrestling. All right? And Amanda, we're going to get to you. Don't worry. Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) But I want to lay this out. I saw when I was in high school an actual fight breakout between two people where one of them was this weirdo white kid who was always weird and awkward where when the fight seemed to get started he literally jumped up with both his feet going all the way up in the air as he jumped backwards to land on his feet and then stood on the the balls of his toes and rocked back and forth like it was the video games you know what i mean like when you're picking (laughs) when you're selecting like street Street fighter 
<laughs> you know, when you go through the menu and the person just jumps down and like their knees are all the way up and they drop down and then they're like with their heels up, rocking back and forth. He was doing that. Like, this is how we're going to fight. I remember him throwing kicks that were just Street Fighter style kicks. And you're like, this guy thinks it's a video game, but that's not how fights work. And then he got his ass kicked because it's not how fights work. Yeah, because fireballs so, not going to come out, you know? Yeah. The fireball's not coming, pal. No. You're not Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Kenny Omega wrestles like that guy. This is what I think wrestling, this is what I think fighting looks like because of video games. Mm -hmm. Wes, he laid in a Hurricane Rana. He goes over and does this jump where he goes to grab the guy's feet or to grab his, the guy's head with his feet. And you could see the pressure on the guy's head from his feet. And you could see him pull on him. I haven't seen someone pull off a Hurricane Rana like that almost ever. It always looks hyper assisted and you always just accept it. This dude was moving like a video game, but more like Capoeira. Have you ever seen somebody fight that way? Mm -hmm. I used to watch these guys train Capoeira, and I used to joke around with them because they were also break dancers. But they used they they it was kind of like this this harmony there. But I saw one of them get into a fight and use it in a way where it's like Jesus, like there's a fluidity to your mo your movements because you're able to figure out a way to m put your body motion and all your weight into these connections. And Wes was fighting like Capoeira mixed with video games, and it was fucking crazy to see play out. It was super believable, really cool to see, and it made me just go, who the fuck are these guys, and why have I not been watching every single one of their matches? And You don't watch Impact. And this is where I say Marsh... <laughs> This is where I say Marsh can eat crow because actually both both y'all were talking about impact, not very interested, and these guys were there. So That's a good point. This is the this is the part of the show where I eat crow because I just said I even tweeted out this is the first night I've ever seen these two guys perform and and tweeted them out and said and I'm instantly jealous of everybody who's who already has. I can't wait to see a bunch more. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. I was like, where have these guys been the whole time? And then Kuro's probably in the, it probably left the chat by now, but he's like, they're on fucking impact. Yeah. Yep. And splinter, Why? splinter, impact. impact wrestling, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yep. But, yep. Yeah. Um, so, so let me, let me catch you up on the chat and then I'm going to throw it to you, Amanda. I want you to tell me all about okay. them. Justin time says, my only question is what does MSK stand for? Correct. Nobody knows. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> it's provocative. Uh, splinter Fox says, I seen them do that crazy move that they did a thousand times, but it looked like they almost knocked them out, which is awesome. He goes, I hope they don't have them stop doing it. Um, he did uptime Mortal Kombat. Uh, he says, I can't believe you haven't seen them. Impact Wrestling, baby. Warrior Wrestling, the indie scene. Um, it's not, it's not useful scene, but <laughs> um, correct. And I had heard of them. I had seen pictures of them. I saw when they got signed and I was like, oh yeah, the rascals, the rascals, the rascals. I've heard good things. Yeah. I should check them out, but I never got around to it. Amanda, I hear you've seen them once or twice. Oh, I've seen them a little bit. Um, they are actually, and this is the first time ever that uh, because of COVID, they're actually still the PW, PWG tag team champions. So somebody called the Young Bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. Are a little upset about that because since you know obviously they were holding the record of the longest uh reign with the pwg title uh tag title belts no the rascals overcame them but a lot of it was because they didn't really wrestle but and they're still there but if you've never seen the rascals i definitely recommend going through the pwg catalog um from the last oh geez Oh, actually the last like year and a half two years I mean they've wrestled everybody you name it they've had some really stellar matches against um Santana and Ortiz that I mean yeah that's an impact match thinking I know what you're thinking but I, on PW it was a different it was a different level I mean the athleticism between both of them is just unbelievable um Wesley I have to agree I mean of the pair He's probably the real, the real standout. And um, I've always thought that, I think he's had a gym, he has a gymnastics background. I think he's told me that before, if I'm not mistaken. But also to be fair too, is um, 
I was talking to him one time and he was telling me that if you ever want like a first time match and you want to see some good fucking wrestling, he's like, have me and Swerve do something because we bring out a lot of shit out of each other. I don't think they've ever wrestled Jake Atlas, if I'm not mistaken, but I will say that you've got a lot of guys in there that are completely like athletic. So that's why you're getting that video game kind of feel because you really don't mm. get that when you, you know, when you see them against like a Santana and Ortiz. Um, one match that I really was, uh, we couldn't get unfortunately because of an injury was I was looking forward to seeing Aussie Open versus those guys. Mm. And we didn't get it because of an injury um, that happened that day. But I will say that as a tag team, there are certain people that when they're partnered together as a team, you know, it's just great chemistry. And this is one of those teams that, I mean, they could have gone to the main roster first. They're that polished. And I think yes. that, you know, it's- I immediately thought that. Yeah, like, I. that's where I was curious, like, okay, how are they, you know, what are they gonna do? And then the other thought too was, okay, they had the one guy that was with, Thatcher, I can't remember his name. I only remember his indie name. Ryan Taylor, you know, the 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 no name guy he was trying to coach or is trying to coach. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Isn't it Russ something or I don't know. Yeah, Russ. I don't remember. Anyways, um, shows you how much I care. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was shocked that they were using him first. I'm like, well, what about the damn rascals? What's going on with those two? But it's a very appropriate um introduction to them. I think that there's a lot that they can bring into the tag division. Um, splitting them up is, I mean, they could do it. Um, because I know, uh, what is Wentz's name? The other one. Nash. But there's Wesley and then there's. Nash Carter. Nash Carter. Okay. Nash Carter. He's got a, um, an MMA background. So, you know, oh, he's wow. the big striking and, and everything. Cause he did, um, I think he did blood sport last year when they did that modified kind of like Russell con or whatever the heck it was. Um, he did Josh Barnett's blood sport. So he he's done that before, but definitely, you know, these are guys that they're better together than separate. The sad part is the third, I, we all thought was going to NXT which is Trey Miguel, because as a six man, oh God, those three, you add one more person who's kind of flippy dippy, but in a more kind of spunky way, that that is just another level. But definitely, I think this was the best way for them to, to do it. I mean, seeing is believing. I mean, these guys do some incredible shit that I am just like, how do you do that? Like, I did, I don't know. And it's yeah. safe. That's the thing is it's done safely because that's people true do too. Some... I didn't see a single yeah. thing that they did where I didn't feel like they weren't in complete control. No, and I'll tell you doing that assisted standard moonsault, I think yeah. immediately gives me the impression just from like a, just a watching at home. I go, Oh, they know all about what they're doing. Oh yeah, they do. And you know, a lot of people don't give them a lot of credit because you know, they're some, they're Sammy Callahan's kids. You know, meaning they trained with him and they were training in Dayton, Ohio. And a lot of people that's, don't care for Sammy Callahan. But if you had you told me they trained two, with him, I, I first I would have said, OK, well, I have no reason to watch them. Yeah, so I'll tell you exactly. Right, but but yes. <laughs> that's who they trained with. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a shock because you're like, what the hell? Where did these guys come from? So, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, they're probably some of the best that are out there. I think that yeah. this was the place for them to go. AEW they would have gotten lost this is what I think that um Jack Evans and Angelico wish they could do yes that's what they're supposed to be like but they're not they're not anywhere yes. near that matter of fact Clump had mentioned earlier in a text with me that he thought where is it real quick um He said it was like a mix between private party and th two, but he thought they were mm -hmm. they were better. 
uh, and he goes all the good and none of the bad of either of them. So I, mean, I think that's I think that's true too. They definitely got like like THQ vibes, like uh, like you said, in Helico and and Evans. Um, mm-hmm. But I also could see that sort of like private party sort of vibe because I do think the private party is a little more flashy in their moves. I felt like the flashiness of MSK was there, but it was so on point and it actually looked vicious. This wasn't like a mm-hmm. you usually don't get flips and high impact. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you do with Pac, but there's a lot of guys where they just do all these flips and it just looks like you're you're flipping around and not touching anybody. These, yeah. These guys look like they were finding a way to throw their bodies at people mm-hmm. with yeah. more and Sammy more Sammy Guevara is a good example of someone who flippy, flippy, flippies, not really making that contact. So it looks kind of off. Uh, that, yes. That's just my name of his. Yeah, the contact is just not like there. That. Oh, well, Osprey's like that a lot too. A hundred percent. That's my biggest yeah. problem with Osprey. It's why I can't yeah. watch his matches. He doesn't look like he's even touching these people. It looks mm-hmm. like a complete gymnastics routine, a little Cirque du Soleil, which I do like Cirque du Soleil. I've been to the shows before. I think they're fantastic, but I'm watching something else. Uh, Producer, has something she wanted to say. Yeah, to me, to me, it's, it's like watching people at the gym where it's like, oh, okay, so you're lifting a lot of weights i mean you're you're doing this for yourself you're not actually doing it to like you said make contact it's it's not simulating any sort of combat sport to me yeah it looks like sparring at best um i think the osprey stuff looks so hyper choreographed and and pre-planned and it feels like they took weeks and weeks to make sure they had it all memorized the right way and i don't think the motions are all even natural where I do think that guys like the Rascals, apparently, and guys like Ricochet, they look natural in their motions, and they look like they figured out ways to to build momentum with flips and not just do a flip and then do a thing. Mm-hmm. Sort of like... Um, Seidel does that, too, Matt Seidel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like how Alexa will do that thing where she like throws someone in the corner and she runs up to them mm-hmm. and then stops herself and slaps them. Yeah. That's what it feels like with a lot of the flippy guys. Because they'll yeah. do the flips where it feels like, okay, well, you just stopped all your momentum to do the actual one thing you were trying to do, not using the momentum to assist in the thing you're trying to do, yeah. which I think the Rascals have down pat. Mm-hmm. And I, Another good one is Flip well. Gordon. But I know people... Flip Gordon was good. People don't like Flip, but you know what? Don't bring the politics into the wrestling. This He's is true. good. This is true. He's good. Um, well, Splinter Fox doesn't want to see them go to the main roster, but I'll tell you, the idea of rascals or msk against the usos against the new day against Mm -hmm. well that's who i was thinking of usos yeah because when i think of people who know exactly where their body's gonna go before they do the move like even mid move there are some people that are just so talented with knowing how to just move their body and almost like dancers but in a way that's not choreographed. Yeah. And I first think of Usos. Next, I think of Ricochet. Yeah, Ricochet. Um, I think even um, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander against like the MSK group. Mm-hmm. I just think you could get some incredible matches out of those groups. Yeah. So I can understand wanting to see them stay in NXT because people have this weird, this delusional con- misconception that main roster is death for NXT, but that's only by people who don't watch the show who think that. Um mm-hmm. Because the entire roster, top to bottom, all came from NXT, including Roman Reigns. So, yeah, all of NXT gets buried. The The idea of wanting them to stay in NXT, though, because of how strong their tag division is, especially when you look at this, this roster of tag teams, you go, yeah, I don't think I would mind. The only unfortunate bit is Kyle O'Reilly is not really in, in a tag team anymore. Now you have Adam yeah. Cole and Roderick Strong. And to be honest, seeing Roddy and Kyle O'Reilly or Roddy and Bobby Fish against MSK – that excites yeah. me way more than Roddy and Adam Cole, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. I feel you on that um, one. Yeah, let's see. He's accused me of not watching Osprey, but I've actually seen too much. Um, he does say RIP R- flip. You got the bad hand being stuck in ROH. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, Justin says, sign me up for MSK versus Usos match when the time comes, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um so if Fox think, thinks the Usos would throw them around, or the new ki- or uh, or even the new day would, the MSK is too small. Uh, I don't think. No. That they oh would. no. Oh no. 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 Um, definitely. You know, 
I guess with the Usos, I guess you could say Santana and Ortiz are kind of about that same mass and size. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I mean, and they had a barn burner with those two. I mean, they've been in there with Lucha Brothers. I mean, yeah. you name it, they've been in, they've been in there with it. And I, you know, they Penta's a pretty pretty thick boy, you know, and yeah. I think that you know they've held more than their own with it with them. It's so it sounds crazy because I I've even said it already on the show uh, at least once already. I'm not a huge fan of Breezango's presentation at all, but I am actually really excited about the concept of eventually getting Breezango versus MSK because I do think the Fandango and Tyler Breeze are incredible workers and put on incredible matches. Oh, yeah. I just can't watch their entrance or I get pulled out. Um, I'm looking at the other tag teams that are there. Imperium and MSK could be incredible. Legata del Fantasma and MSK. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could be sick. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think the MSK is, they blew me away, man. They surprised the hell out of me. I was not, I had heard about them. I was excited to see them from that regard of like, oh yeah, I've, I've heard the rascals are good. Like I'm interested to see where it goes. But I just couldn't even blink during this match. And everything they did, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. So, um, big but check props out, to those guys. But don't look at Impact and their Impact stuff, because I'll be quite honest. <laughs> it, you know, some of those tag teams, are, they're not that great. You need to look if you have High Spots Network. And if you don't, I recommend it. I mean, just for the PWG catalog. And just look at some of those. And you're just like, whoa. They bring it yeah. every single time. Yeah, I agree. Splinter Fox does say that um, DIY versus MSK would have been incredible back in the day. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said it a little bit different in there, but but that's what he's talking about. DIY versus MSK. Yeah, that could have been fucking crazy. Or FTR during that time frame. Oh, yeah. During MSK, Al- American Alpha. I am already, I've only seen one match, and I've already got Rascals in my mind as one of the best tag teams to ever come through NXT. Like, that's an impression. If if nothing else, they made a hell of an impression on the first first go. Yeah, and I think tag teams are really they're a true tag team is really rare and hard to find. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Bishop's heading out. He says he's got to go. He'll catch us later on the pod. I appreciate that, man. Cheers to you. Uh, we'll see you down the road there. Um, oh, Mustache Mountain versus MSK. That's true. I forget all about the mm-hmm. the British guys. Man. Tons of possibilities. Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan I'm excited for. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. get there. We'll get there. Uh, let's see. There's only two other matches on the card. Zia Lee. Man, Zia Lee is fucking badass. I loved this. She goes out there, punches that lady, kicks her in the fucking head, and then just, that's it. That's the end of the match. And then as she goes to leave, whoever this ominous, crazy creature is on the top of the ramp just puts out their hands and they're like, no, you better go fuck them up more. And then she just like throws this lady around and ties her up in the rope so she could just punch her a shitload and then throw a knee. It was crazy. Zia Lee went from being impressive in the Royal Rumble and wondering what would eventually happen with her because she shows a lot of promise to being an actual murderer on TV. And I'm fucking here for it. What would you think of it? Yeah. Oh, God. I was like, this is fucking great i mean because you don't really see women like that anymore you either get like creepy people like yes. abaddon or you get you know regular you know women you don't see these badass bitches like this is something you would want i guess like a nyla rose to do she didn't yeah. do that you know i i don't know that was the impression i got and i was just like i'm loving this this is great what do you think about her presentation you know if i hadn't watched the little vignettes i'd be confused okay (laughs) yeah yeah i'll just put it that way (laughs) all right yeah Mm -hmm. i like it on whole i do think it's really cool and i do think in a world where we have it's not uncommon to have culturally insensitive material. I think this is a really cool way of representing. Yeah, it's that not culturally. Side. Insensitive. I don't. I don't think it is. And also, like it is. any of the Japanese wrestlers, I've never thought it was culturally insensitive. 
Like when you look at I like thought we borderline were doing that when they first named the Kabuki Warriors and the music changed the way it was. I thought well I thought that was getting borderline. But, but the women, Asuka and Kari, played through so well that it was mm-hmm. fun. But I felt yeah. like that the original presentation when they first announced Kabuki Warriors, I was like, this feels a little insensitive. Uh, yeah. Well, at least they weren't called Oriental. This I, is true, I, <laughs> I think also at the time the commentary was adding to that, which is why you, because, re- yeah, that's what I remember. Commentary was probably fueling my fire. That could be. Yeah. That could be. Um, yeah, and I don't think that it's this is being insensitive. It does remind me a lot of those old movies and stuff, and I think that she looks like a fucking badass when she's doing it. There's nothing like goofy about yeah. it at all. Like at first when you start to see it, you're like, is this kind of a, and you're like, never mind. I'm scared. Never. I'm scared. Never mind. Never mind. I'll yeah. shut you up. You know what I'm it scared. reminds she... me of? Go ahead. Is Kill Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Uma Thurman's character. Mm-hmm. Cause she's just, she's just like badass. Yeah. Maybe that's a bit bad, you know, like comparison yeah. to no. But that just, I, I just, I get that feeling. Like I like that she's going through the weapons because she started out with those weird spikes before and this time she mm-hmm. came with like a bow staff and she's yeah. doing like stuff with it where you're just like, fuck. Yeah. Um, in the chat real quick says, um, Splinter Fox misses American Alpha. Um, I mean, Jordan got hurt real bad, but yeah, there was other weird stuff going on with him. Uh, he says he misses the NXT Baz. I don't know what what that one is. Uh, I, I think I'm. I think I must have said something a minute ago that I forgot about already. Um, I drink so. Let's see. Justin says he loves Ali. The presentation, the aggression. She's got future women's champion contender, possibly even champion written all over her. I agree. I think there's no stopping a character like that. She's got a crazy level. She's got like Ronda Rousey legitimacy without us having to see her knock out a fucking dozen women first. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. And Splinter Fox thinks. Oh, uh, Shayna. He misses Shayna in NXT, yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. he says, uh, Maiko Satamora is who he thinks the mm-hmm. mystery lady is. I think it's very, very possible that that's the case. I've never thought that. We we know that she signed up with NXT UK to be a trainer, so it's possible that she's around. Mm-hmm. And we know she's fucking badass. So we yeah. know that. But I don't think that... I. I kind of, I personally, I just, I'm kind of a neither here nor there kind of mentality about it. I don't have a solid placement of my own viewing of it to say whether yay or nay. I think that that's very possible. And I think if that's true, if that comes to fruition, it'll be dope. I have nothing against it. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just, we see so little and it is so mysterious that it, I'm having a hard time even assigning a gender to that yeah, person there, I don't that's think, on the top of the ramp. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm just terrified of it. <laughs> yeah, I, all I know is it's like, this is this is something badass, and it's either, if it doesn't have a cool payoff, then I don't know. But Correct. it's going to. And I think, actually, Splinter makes a great point. If it's not her, I hope they never reveal the mystery lady. And I think that's actually a great point. If you yeah. don't have a tremendous reveal, let it be fucking scary mystery forever. We don't need a reveal yeah. on this one. Yeah, I don't feel like it needs to be shown if it's not amazing. That's true, too, because I don't know where you go with it. Like, let's say it is. Where do you go with it? A match between Zaya and Maiko, which could be good. So maybe. But if it's not her, yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. Let her just be the crazy fucking entity, whoever it is. <laughs> who was the um, Who was the one in AEW that was uh, with the mustache? The woman with the mustache? Oh God! What's her name? Emmy Sakura. Who... Yeah. Could be Emmy Sakura. That'd be wild. I doubt it's uh, Rio, even though she's not with Stardom anymore. That would be funny. I would love it if it turned out to be Rio. That would be, <laughs> That'd be so hilarious. fucking funny. Uh, let's see. Justin does say in the chat. I still think it would be weird if it's Maiko, uh, with it being a group of Chinese while Maiko is Japanese. I could see that. Gives me the yeah. whole NXT just went with the Japanese Chinese is the same thing moment. That's true too. If it is, mm-hmm. yeah, that could come off weird for sure. Which also would 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 lay into the idea of maybe we just don't ever find out and that's okay because maybe yeah. we just avoid that whole thing. Mm-hmm. But either way, it's a bunch of scary motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm gonna be mm-hmm. honest. Yep. So I'm loving it. I think it's so good. I think that. 
Yeah, Xia Li could be champion. She's a fucking threat. Here's the other weird bit, though. I will give Splinter Fox this because I know it'll, it'll shit on me if I don't. Shayna Baszler was a mean motherfucker in NXT, an honest to God threat who you thought could murder everyone and has not played out on the main roster that way. I still think there's time. I still think we could get there, but I why do think that? that that, what do you mean? Why is that? I mean, well, cause I don't watch, I don't watch the main roster. So I, I she's just but... goofing off with Nia Jax doing dumb shit. She then she, she wins some, loses some. It's not even a th- like it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, it is, it's whatever it is. She's never in contention for the title. She still only fought Becky the once for the title, and that was kind of it. Like, mm. I don't know, it's just, she hasn't come off as a major threat there, which is a shame because she's a fucking mean motherfucker. I know. Um, she's badass. But that's my concern is because I think that Zaya is so badass. I'm like, she doesn't need to stay in NXT. She could go anywhere. But, but they're not going to know what to do with her because it's going to be this exactly. bullshit. Why you may watch? not know what to do with it. So, um, let's see. The battle between her and Zaya over good and bad could be good. Uh, Justin does say it would give him credibility. Splinter Fox says, Zaya got crazy built too. Look at her in the classic. Oh, 100%. I remember when she came out in the Rumble. We were right there second row for 2019 Rumble. She came out. And I remember thinking, like, I have no idea who this Chinese lady is. But I remember by the end of her stint in there, I remember we were looking at each other going, damn, she's good. Uh, Where's she? How come I've never seen her before? And so when she showed back up on the main roster, it was like, it were not main roster, but in NXT, I was excited, but then she disappeared again. But if you watch on her Instagram, she was just training and training and training. I was like, man, she's getting pretty cut. Yeah. Her coming back looking like she's looking is like, she's a fucking threat. So I'm into that. I think it's really good. Um, Shayna being a vampire at the bat. Um, and Splinter Fox says she was in the classic. Yeah, but I didn't watch the classic. I didn't watch all of the Mae Young classic. I watched some of it, and plus I didn't recognize her from it from the begin get the get go from when I saw her jump into the Rumble. So, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say about Zaya other than fucking keep it going, never stop this. Uh, and then the, the main event was Undisputed Era versus Breezango. Undisputed Era won. Uh, Pete Dunn and Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch came out to fuck around with Kyle O'Reilly. Finn Balor came out there to protect Pete Dunn, and it was kind of a big schmoz. But ultimately, Undisputed Era wins this one. As much as this was all kind of cool and I want to see how it kind of plays out, I was also a little... I wasn't as excited about any of this as I was about Zaya or MSK. This was just more of the same, and we see where it goes, and kind of okay. Does that make sense? What do you think of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt the same way. I mean, especially because of where you had that the MSK match, it's like almost like, oh, you get let down. But then you have Zion, it's like, oh, no, 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 this is great. And then, oh, okay. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. So it was a very, it was very roller coaster y. It just yeah. went back into the station. I mean, this match was good and all, but it wasn't anything yeah, I didn't it, expect it to be. Yeah, I mean... I wasn't blown away by it. It's fine. It was a good match, but okay. So, it's just another day at the shop. Yeah, yeah, it did feel a lot like that. Yeah, it's another so day at the shop. Show. Oh, we're wrestling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Oh, the baddies are going to come out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like no, Gargano. Yeah. He's very passive. Like, okay. It's another day at the office. All right. Yeah. Skating by. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, to be honest, and, and I do think the NXT was really good. It did feel mm-hmm. a little more special than the average Dyna, or not the average Dyna, but the average NXT, <laughs> yeah. but not a lot because we are doing the Dusty Roads Classic. Next week, they've announced they're doing the Women's Dusty Roads Classic. And we've got a few cool pairings there. They announced that Shotzi and Amber Moon are going to be a team. Mm-hmm. Excited to see that. I mean, I do feel like Ember has been start and stop for a long time. So I do think that her teaming up with someone young and fresh could be good for both of them. We'll see how that goes. Um, Tony Storm's pairing with Martinez, Mercedes Martinez, oh, which is wow. a really strange pairing to me. But I'm excited to see how that plays out because both of them that's, are incredible. That's really strange, but it sounds, but it's so good when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, let's see. The uh, I don't remember the other two teams off the top of my head because those are the two that stood out to me. But we're going to get a couple matches this coming up week, this next week uh, for that. So we'll go over those. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to send you a roster, the the bracket, so you can put in your, your predictions here. Um, mm-hmm. And we'll just see where, we're, where where we go from there. Was yeah, there anything you thought we missed that you vet. wanted to make sure we talked about? Go ahead. No, no, but Grizzly Young Vets was who I was going for in that match anyway before even seeing it. So, but yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a little uh, bracket, brickety brack. But yeah, no, my I I think for the win it's going to be it's going to be MSK because there's no there there's just no way if they don't pull the trigger on that then I'll be a little disappointed. I actually agree. Even before knowing it was the Rascals, I had put MSK, to be honest. I posted it. It's online. I can't fake it. I had posted <laughs> them as going the whole way towards the end. Because I was like, I have a feeling this tournament's going to be well-suited for whoever this team is. Because why else would they have this surprise team like this? Then when I saw them, I was all like, oh, they're stupid if they don't win the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing, you know, There, there's not nobody, there's not a team like that in the whole yes, tournament. Yes, hundred percent. So in, yeah. And actually outside of the even, tournament, there's not a team like that at all. Well, yeah. I mean, even on the main roster, whatever. Yeah. You have to go to the other people. Yeah. Uh, Justin mm-hmm. does say in the chat, Caden uh, Carter and Casey Cantanzaro versus Candice Larray and Indy Hartwell were the other two teams. And that's right. Those are two mm-hmm. solid teams. I think it's going to go to Candice and Indy, but I really like Casey and Caden. I want to see them do more. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope, and they actually cut a really good promo. They had a promo uh, last night too, where they said, um, you know, please underestimate us. We're loving it. Don't think much of us. This is how we win. You know, I think it'd be great. Yeah. It'd be nice to see them. It would. I wouldn't mind if they took it the whole thing just as like these uh, kind of women tag team, Daniel Bryan type underdog story. Yeah. I'd love it. I think that both of them are incredible. I think they're both underutilized we just don't see them enough and i think they're fantastic every time we do see them so yeah i'm all for that um amanda was there anything that we missed no i think we we ran the whole gamut of things um yeah i think we chewed this one down to the bone yeah yeah it just was a lame night of you know AEW. it was kind of well it was it was okay there's a lot of lameness but yeah. if I were to have to say which were the better show, I'd probably say just because of the two matches, NXT was probably just kicked it in the butt. Yeah. NXT had me fired up. AEW had me questioning what's going on around here. Yeah. Also, though, from your standpoint, though, I mean, AEW ended with your boy getting whooped down with a bat. Yeah, but I don't want to see my boy that's... getting whooped down with a bat. No. That's what I mean. That's got to be hard to 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 get past. Like I mean, even if let's let's imagine the show was good, and then you mm-hmm. watch your boy catch an ass whooping with a okay. bat from a sixty year old man. The show's know, not going to be good at the end. <laughs> I know, but also you got to think. Okay, the guy's always he's always okay. This is where I'm thinking he's going to part ways with Team Taz because he takes the pin. Okay, he's now gotten hit by a sixty year old man with a bat. Yeah. Okay knock the shit out of him and yeah. yeah like he's like chopped liver in that team because yeah you know he needs to like, break away he needs to break away. he's going to break away and i think that that's the opportunity because honestly like you don't i mean you have taz as the mouthpiece and then every once in a while yeah you let ricky talk but it it doesn't do anything for him it doesn't do anything really for team taz but it's better. I actually do think it'd be good if he broke away and we had some promos with Taz against Ricky, where Ricky oh, could great. really lay into Taz. Yeah, and Taz that'd can, be great. You know, look, look, boy. You know what I mean? Look boy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And you could have Ricky being, you know, look, old man. Yeah. I think it'd be mm-hmm. great. I, I, I think it'd be great that. if Taz allowed him to speak because I do see a lot of these guys who just get mic timed for mic time's sake, yeah. who. St- trample over the other person because they think it makes them alpha but really just makes them a piece of shit like no. you see drew mcintyre do it all the time yeah. someone else will come out with a mic and start cutting a promo and then no matter what they say he's like oh, okay mate and you're like shut up <laughs> let this guy no. talk for a second and i feel like no. that taz might be the type to be like no 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 no, no hold on hold on are you about no, to say and like, no shut yeah. up oh, uh, yeah no yeah yeah, no, sure. I think that that's... But that's speculation. Yeah. You could go either way. That, that is total speculation. But, you know, honestly, I think that 
that's the way to go with them with him so you have that because i don't see darby is not i'm sorry he's not a marketable champion i wouldn't like if if they are going back to having that belt that belt should be defended almost every week but if they're going back to that i don't darby allen is not a reason for me to tune in every week He's not. I don't think he has the the work rate that Ricky has either. I mean, seeing Ricky do seven matches in two days, yeah, was enough for me to know that he could do a match a week night. and put on a good one. Yeah, three in one night, and you know, look like a, look like a boss, just on the the pay per view night alone, looking like a yeah. boss. 100%. I mean that, but I'm not saying this because you know, whatever. I'm just saying it's because. I think that, you know, honestly, like that's why they brought, that's why they signed him because they finally saw that value in him and it just, you have to let it shine. And I think that's everybody that they've been signing and bringing in. Cause I, I, did they officially like sign Griff Garrison? I don't think they did, but he works uh, so well know. with Pillman, but he works so yeah. well with Pillman. It works for me. And I don't I mean, think they've I, officially signed Pillman either, to be honest. Oh, well, they act as if they are because they got the cool, you know, they have their matching yeah. gear now and all that. And the varsity. Well, yeah, jacket. and he and he got rid of the OVW title. Um, oh yeah. Let's hit up the chat and wrap it up. Let's see. Yeah. Um, Splinter Fox says that he thinks uh, Mini Rock, as he calls Ricky, Rakito, mm. uh, is not going to leave Team Taz. I think Sammy will leave Inner Circle before Ricky leaves Team Taz. Uh, he goes, they'll both be baby faces soon. I'm calling it. No. He says that Mini Rock is amazing talking talking during dark. Um, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I don't think Sammy's going to leave. I think Sammy adores Jericho and is going to do whatever it takes to stay around him from like yeah. a real standpoint, not from like a TV standpoint. Yeah, I know. Uh, Justin says Ricky Starks does find it feel like the odd man out in Team Taz, and I agree with that too. I feel like that he doesn't get as much out of that team as the others get. And Splinter Fox says over Darby and Orange, Sammy and Mini Rock is the real future. Um I don't have a disagreement there, to be honest. Uh, it goes, they can't sign him yet until MLW contract is over. I don't mm. understand contracts. I've made that very clear. The one That's thing I don't know anything about is contracts. I thought he was um, free from MLW, but I could be wrong. I don't know. In my mind, I know Davey Boy anyways. Smith is. I know Davey Boy Smith is. And to be quite yeah, honest, he's a free agent. I, I don't like Archer. Archer's better in a tag team with Davey Boy Smith than he is doing singles. Are they a tag? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They've been a tag for right. years. Killer Elite Squad. Right. Do you think Davy Boy now that he's a free agent? You think he goes back to WWE like he was uh, born to be, or do you think he goes to AEW first? Um, it's a very hard one. I think he probably I think it's goes such to a toy toss. Yeah, it's it's a it's a coin toss because they didn't do anything with him really, you know. Then. Yeah. But what I mean, they, they, I mean, what but that's the argument too, right? So with Morrison, yeah. he comes back and they don't do shit with him, and he comes back. But other people come back and they do they do big things because they came back. The other thing yeah, is, TJ Wilson was on, doing an interview not that long ago saying he's begging Davy Boy to come back. He really wants Davy Boy back. And if you got TJ like, Wilson pushing for you, that sounds good. That's to his me. best friend. That's his old tag partner. But you know, I mean, honestly, like, you know, what would they do with him? That's why, like, I hate Morrison over there. At, I love Johnny. Insert his name here you know i mean that he's one that i think you know it's great to see him in the miz again but you know quite honestly it's like that that shit ran its course you know yeah yeah, yeah. That ran its course 10 years maybe he's ago. funding a new movie and that's why he's with wwe i don't know i i think they're Could pairing be. boone they're was pairing, pretty good i think their pairing actually does both of them a disservice yeah i think they're both better without each other to be honest i think they bring each other down um, yeah. They become sophomoric and weird, but that's a conversation for our Tuesday show. Cause on Tuesday we shit on Raw and SmackDown. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we just shit on AEW and NXT. <laughs> yeah. Thursdays we shit on NXT and AEW. Tuesdays we shit on Raw and SmackDown. I'm just kidding. We celebrate all of wrestling here. We love it all. Even if I'm not into it, I'm hoping to find conversation with people who are into it because either you'll help me see what I'm missing or we'll just agree to disagree and have a drink yeah. about it and still remain friends. That's the whole point of all this. Sprinter Fox going wild in the chat about Johnny Impact. Um, 
making money. Pillman Jr. Yeah, he's Splinter Fox going wild in there. He's loving it. I agree with him though, where Ricky Starks is the future. Hmm. Guys, sure damn the is. whole point of this. Yeah. hundred percent. Every time I hear him talking like this is it, but guys come back, join us on Tuesday for another drink. While we yell about wrestling, a little bit of pointless aggression, pick up your shirts at prowrestlingtees.com slash wrestling on the rocks. Check out our website, wrestling the rocks.com. Check out all of our links at wrestling rocks.com to find us. Oh, just in time, getting one in real quick. Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer reuniting in AEW would make more sense. With Tyson Kidd being retired, I don't see WWE doing anything with him, especially as a single star. And <laughs> Fox again, Mini Rock, Sammy, MJF. Those are his favorites. I don't know, man. I'll be honest. If he shows up as a singles in, I'd be more excited to see Davy Boy as a single star than as a tag star. So if he showed up in NXT or, or main roster, as a single star, I'm super curious to see where that goes. I think he's got a great personality. I think he's tremendous in the ring. If he shows up in AEW and tags up with Lance Archer, I'm going to watch because I'm interested in them as well. Guys, I think we've done it. I think we've drank all we can drink. We've yelled all we can yell. And I think we will be back. <laughs> well, you didn't drink enough, Amanda. I Well, I did in the beginning. <laughs> You she's like, off. she's like, this isn't so much a slushy as just rum with some ice, yeah. flavored ice. <laughs> yeah, that slushy melted. Guys, no, thank so you weird. for coming through. <laughs> thank you for having a drink with us. We'll see you next time. That's last call, guys. Cheers. Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink by following and putting the eye and subscribe on Twitch. Or subscribe and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers. I would never have a drink with wrestling on the rocks.